Well, we are back, huh? We're back at the Nine Club, everybody. Today, we got a special, special, special guest, <laughs> Mr. Rick Kosick. Thank you. <laughs> I got three. That's pretty good. Who, is anyone top three? I think it's average. Okay. I try to That's, do three. Yeah, it's Rick, a... people, sometimes they want more. Hey, you know, I'm, I'm happy with three. You happy with three? <laughs> I am, okay. You. It turns into a whole thing. Just you know, I do a four. I do four, and then this person wants five. And then the comments, they you only gave him two, and then give a, him another. It's a whole thing. No, no, three's yeah. good. Three's good. Yeah, yeah. Special, special guest. Save like, it for the professionals. Okay. <laughs> you are <laughs> professional. Well, you get paid to do what you do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I guess so. I'm talking about the skateboarders. Oh. Like Muska or Brick, you but, but see, this is a thing. And we just, you know, I, I say it all the time. It's like we have Socrates Leolon, film filmer, we got Tim Dowling, we got photographers. I their episodes are the most fascinating because they're they? all behind the scenes yeah. and shit we yeah. want to really know about that the skaters lot. don't really tell. I know, right? Yeah. What's up with that? Loose lip sync chips. We're about, to get, we're about to get it. We're, we're going to get it out of you today. Okay? <laughs> well, we'll try. Everything, <laughs> trust me, bro. You might not even want this thing to air after we're done with it. <laughs> well, thanks for having me on your show. D pleasure. Hell dude. yeah. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Good? Yeah. Well, what's going on with you these days, bro? I mean... We'll, we'll get we'll get back into well, growing up in OC and all that stuff and just right now I'm in between jobs. Okay, um, getting ready to go on to something pretty big next year. Mm. I can't announce it, Ooh. but it's gonna oh. be fun. Okay, and uh, we'll get that out of you by the end. Of the show. <laughs> <laughs> no, you won't. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Kelly, go give him a shot of tequila. Oh, sure, <laughs> got some right here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, uh, did you know a bunch of Vice stuff? Okay. And, Sick, you know, and uh, obviously King of the Road TV show series. That's right. It was That's a lot right. of fun while it lasted. They're not doing it anymore. No, man, are you bummed? I was disappointed. I, I was like, you know, after the third season, I was like, all right, I'm cool with three. Really? <laughs> yeah, I was like, you know, all right, I'm, I got three under my belt. I'm pretty stoked. But so, I was like, then all of a sudden you get like, all right, are we gonna do this again? Let's do this again, you know, because it's fun. It's a lot yeah. of fun. Yeah. Right. Which teams were you on the three that you did? The first season was with Toy Machine. Okay. With Mike Sinclair, and that was the season that we lost. Okay. <laughs> Second season, I was with Enjoy, and they won. They won, <laughs> yes. right. And then the third season was with Foundation, with Mike Sinclair again, and we lost. Okay. It seems like Sinclair's not really the good luck try. He's <laughs> great to be around. Well, I don't think it's Sinclair's fault. Okay. Billy Marks, maybe? Mm, no, I don't know. <laughs> I just, it's just workmanship, you know? You gotta really want it. You got to. And uh, you just gotta put the work in and go for it. So let me ask you a question. The King of the Road stuff, you videographer, you're videoing the whole mm -hmm, thing, yeah. right? Now, are you, there, there's there's a couple video guys, there's a filmer guy, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, a producer, so maybe, here, a, a sound guy. So here it is. Okay. Uh, three vehicles. Uh, obviously there's the team, there's our vehicle, which mm -hmm. is like me, two cameramen, sound guy, the producer okay, and a, a driver. Okay. You need a driver. And then there's another vehicle, which is the rolling DIT. Mm -hmm. So we're constantly dumping footage. So we have four cameramen, two GoPros and the sound guy. DIT is, would be, D you know, downloading media as we're going oh, all day long. Oh. So, I mean, the first season they were like, yeah, Rick, you're going to shoot and download all your media. And I'm like, how? <laughs> <laughs> That's what they did the first couple years just on Thrasher. They probably weren't filming as much as we were. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And uh, yeah, if you're shooting a terabyte and a half a day, it's just like, would wow. the first season was brutal. We were only getting five hours of sleep every night. Mm -hmm. And then by the third season, we kind of learned the system like, oh, you know what? We're going to back off, let the skate filmers shoot the rest because they know what we're doing. They, they, they learn from us, our system, and mm. they know how to cover it. Okay. And then they can just go and work hard in the middle of the night, and we'll get a few more extra hours of sleep. We'll mm. see you in the morning. Mm. We'll okay. do the wrap up. So three vans per team. Mm, yeah. That's wow. gnarly. What was, the third, what was the third van for? You know, just the, the you know, downloading media or have mm. to go run errands. Oh. Sometimes we go, hey, we'll get, we'll get you guys some pizza. Romer, right, we, Romer van. Uh, we have a guest in the, in the room. But he doesn't want to be in there. <laughs> yeah, Louis Barletta sitting in the kitchen right now. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Trust me, Rick, all the comments are going to be like, get Louis on the show. Yeah. It's like, well, we have Rick Kosick here. <laughs> yeah. Wait, was yeah. there like a filmer that you put in the van with the team? 
Or is it just yes? The, there'll uh, be two filmers. Oh, okay. Two skate filmers. Oh, okay. And they were documenting everything inside the In, van. Inside, as well as a GoPro going. We had two or three mm. GoPros inside the van. Okay, Jeez. that was feeding back to the other van. So, you, or was no, it just recording? Just recording oh, the okay. card, and we just switch it out. Now, how does it work? Because obviously, you can't be recording twenty four hours a day, right? You need to be selective on what you guys are filming. Well, that's the whole. How thing. does it work? We're just we just go hard. It, it, it's just. We just when we see a story and we know something funny is about to uh, transpire, <laughs> okay. we're on it. You know, like, <laughs> nothing's gonna stop us. You know, and if it works, it works. If it doesn't. It's the cutting room floor. Okay, right. God, imagine those editors. Oh, hours. They take a long time to put that show together. Well, you know? it was like they would. You guys would do it, and then what? Six months later, it'd come out. Long turnaround. Yeah, it's a lot of work. Interesting. So it sounds like fun. Wait, I so they're, they're not going to do it for Thrasher anymore? Like, it's all done? Uh, you know, through Vice. Pro- through Vice. Through Vice, they're not going to do it anymore. Yeah, but... but you know, whatever Thrasher for, may just do it on their own again. I would hope so. That'd be they awesome. Should. It's up to Burnett. They could do it. Absolutely. Yeah. But, you know, probably on a lower scale. True. Which is fine. They should continue to do it. Yeah. yeah. Vice is... Yeah, I mean, you guys were really... You guys put together a TV show. Yeah. <laughs> we, we shot a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was fun. It was, like I said, the first season was like we were going out, trying to figure out what we're doing, didn't know really what we're doing, but we kind of developed it as we mm-hmm. went and mm-hmm. the system, then we followed it. And the second season, we got better at it. And by the third season, it was just like clockwork. And you were going into the third season already being a winner. Yeah, thinking we, we might do this again, but that wasn't the case. <laughs> Was there anything behind the scenes that was like a highlight to you? Like something funny happened on one of those? Man, there's, it's hard to remember because there's so much stuff, you oh, know, yeah, like yeah. it's just, it's just crazy. And like, you know, when you watch a show, you're like, oh yeah, I remember that. That was, <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was probably best for me. It was really fun being with the Enjoy team. Oh, yeah. sick. Yeah. Being, getting, you know, going to Hawaii. Oh yeah, you guys won, so that, that makes right. it better. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was cool. But I think for me, my the, one of the highlight moments to me is going to Wallows. Oh. You know, because, you know, I grew up watching the Pal Peralta videos. And was that Animal Chain? Animal Chain. And, you know, you went to Wallows. And you know, you're a kid, you're watching like, oh, I always wanted to go there. And so it was pretty strict. Like, only a certain amount of people were allowed to go in. And, like, and Jared's like, all right, who's going to go? I am. I didn't, you didn't, I didn't let him finish his, you know, question. I'm like, I'm going in. <laughs> I have to go in. Why only a certain amount of people? Because it's a bust. Oh, it's okay. It's a total bust. And I think somebody called call the police and we were out mm. of there. But I got to see uh, some amazing moments go down. It's amazing. Someone, uh, what's his name? Jackson Pills did that kickflip. Kickflip. Right? Jackson that kickflipped it. Feet out or five feet out. Damn. Yeah. Like, that's probably a first time ever. Yeah. Huh. Damn. Yeah, it was just that guy Jackson was just a machine. Jackson Pills. Yeah, he's, he's good. Dude. Yeah, he's a, <laughs> yeah. to say the he's least. Incredible. Yeah, for sure. Unbelievable. No jackass antics on there. Nobody was coming up behind you with snakes or anything. <laughs> no, 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 no. The road. It was mouse trapped to the ear. Yeah, mouse trapped to the ear. Yeah, it was. Those are some of the best clips, by the way. We'll get into the whole jackass because you were you filmed a lot of the jackass. Let's talk stuff. about skateboarding. This is where we're <laughs> no, about. but it was. Fun. I love the behind the scene. And then they'd come up behind you with the. Then you oh. had when, you'd have no idea. Yeah, and well, you just yeah. be filming. It's me, dude. I love that kind of shit. So, you probably hated it, but yeah. well, so if, to maybe, the viewer, maybe would you like it if someone did it to you? No, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Dude. As a viewer, it's hilarious. Well, okay, yeah, it's fair yeah. enough. Yeah, you made me laugh. You're welcome. At your at your expense. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it's fascinating though. You, you, let's talk about skating. Let's talk about sure. you growing up in Orange County, mm-hmm. doing it. You worked for Big Brother. Yeah, um, Power how Edge. Power Edge magazine. Yeah, Power yeah, Edge. That's yeah. where I got my big start. Let me tell you something. I don't know if you remember. I probably don't. We <laughs> shot a photo together. We did. Oh, you do remember? Well, <laughs> he's this like, is we bullshitting did. right now. He's bullshitting. <laughs> remember in Santa Monica, right on Ocean, there was a bank in this in a kind of abandoned parking lot. It was kind of a white bank. Oh, at the at the hotel. It was on, cut, on the four hundred five. No, no, right on the, by, by the beach, kind of. You, I did a nolly back heel on it, and I think a nolly heel fakie. And you were there, you mm. shot a photo. I don't know if it came out anywhere. Hmm. And I was like sitting there, I'm like, I'm, dang it, I'm, I mean, I, was, <laughs> I wasn't anybody, but I was like, I'm still not. But How did that happen though? I don't remember. <laughs> I was with somebody who knew you, and they were like, oh, let's take a photo. Rick Kosick's coming. And I'm like, dude, are you kidding me? Rick Kosick? Like, I'm going to take a photo with Rick Kosick. Did we take the photo? Yeah, I don't think you ran it, but. Sorry. 
I don't know. <laughs> you could have. If it's maybe. out there. It, it might be out there. I don't I'm Maybe just, I didn't I don't land remember. it or something. I don't know. I got to say, like for me, like back in the, the days of Big Brother, like when we were nowhere to go, and you look back at this now, like you're like, oh, God dang, we got to go to Venice the pit, you know? <laughs> yeah. like, bitching and complaining. But you know, they're like, you know what? Those were great days, you know? Like, yeah. you're, you're hanging out the beach. <laughs> like In a pit that smelled like piss, piss and, and shit. shit. But, yeah, but, you know. Other than that, it was great. And you yeah. had the, the Hubba right there, too. Yeah. yeah. Did you get a lot of sessions on that? Did you shoot a lot of things? I did a cover with Brian Sumner there. Oh. And I believe it was his first cover ever. What do you do? Nose blended or something? They hurricaned it. Hurricane. Yeah. Okay. It was a sequence. Wow. You just you, you shot a lot of covers for uh, Big Brother. Yeah. 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 I did some, yeah. Well, Wait, you was should... it, it was a sequence cover? Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Those are, like, very rare. They don't sell very well. Yeah. There's just something about it. But, mm. yeah. We, with Big Brother, we did everything we were once supposed to do. <laughs> right. But I love the fact, too, you could have two covers, though, because sometimes they do the back page as a cover as well. Sure. You've got, if you shot that ad. Yeah. But what was cool about Big Brother in the early days is, like, whoever did the best ad won the back cover. Oh. We made it, like, a competition. So everyone would be like, oh, we're going to go for you know, really hard. Yeah. And we would pick the, the winner, you know? And huh. they got, and then that's how it worked in the early days. Did you shoot the Daniel Castillo cover? Of just no, that was, that was Spike Jones. Spike Jones. I came in on the third issue and I shot Day One at Burlbanks. Mm -hmm. That's right. With okay. the torch in the fence. Yeah. Was that the uh, Spiral Brown? Spiral Brown. Yeah. And that was a really cool, like, kind of little story because that was my introduction to World Industries and uh, showing up there at the Torrance office and just the chaos that it ensued. Like, you know, I only way I could describe it was sort of like going to like watching Animal House the movie it's just crazy you know there's just this weird energy in the air and excitement and it's and, very contagious but it was like an office though it was it was uh, yeah yeah but was, it, was Rocco there was anybody uh, like, oh yeah he, he was like alright here you go and he gave me like his credit card and all this cash and he's like <laughs> go get what you need and I'm like awesome <laughs> <laughs> you just walked in there basically just started and then I got the assignment to shoot the cover and then Rocco just gave me the means to get whatever we needed to light up Burl Banks and we got a lantern <laughs> <laughs> works. it lantern. works a gas lantern <laughs> you got a, what is this like 1800 what is this <laughs> got a gas lantern it was pre-generator days okay. we didn't know to go buy a generator and lights and we got a gas lantern <laughs> Made for a great photo. <laughs> it worked. It's yeah. great, though. But it was at Burlbanks. It's a nice neighborhood. Yeah. It was in the middle of the night. Got mm. quiet. Shh. I don't remember that What's being... burning? Yeah, I don't yeah. remember that photo being at night. Huh, interesting. It was at night. Oh, huh. okay. I'll have to go at least 9 o'clock at night. You know, it wasn't too yeah, late, yeah, yeah. but it was dark. What do you do? No, uh, Crooked grind. Crooks. Crooks. How did you even get involved with, like, you know, camera stuff? I mean, you grew up skating in Orange County. Uh, you know, I just started doing photography. Um, I got a great backstory about this. Yo, please. That's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So I was skating. Yes, I did skate once upon a time, but I was really getting into photography, and I was... At the time, I was exploring. I was still living uh, back at my mom's house, mm. helping pay the rent, working a graveyard shift job, stocking grocery shelves during the day, shooting as much as I can. And then I, I somehow came across making friends with Remy Stratton. Interesting. And uh, he was unsponsored at the time, but he was like the local shredder. Like he just was like, oh yeah, we'll we'll shoot, you know. And so his thing is like, dude, I'm trying to get sponsored. Okay, he would steal paper and chemicals from his photography class at high school <laughs> give it to me and so I'm like awesome so I'm, I'm printing photos for him so he gets sponsored and so I helped him get on skull skates GNS and got that all going why by just submitting photos to people or yeah, how did that he just got that's how he got sponsored what his resume yeah I've never heard of that sponsored from photos yeah Huh. Wow. Well, there's no... 80s, no dude. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I mean, I don't like, how old were you guys at this time? <laughs> I was in my you know, young 20s. Young 20s. Okay. He was, so you're, he was definitely a teenager. Oh. So you already knew all the photo stuff. You didn't yeah, have to, I, yeah. My mom let me do, take their her bathroom and turn it into a dark room. Okay. And so there'd be like strips of like film just hanging in the kitchen. I would do all the developing. 
roll my film and print it, do the, wow. everything. And so, and then yeah, Remy would just like, here you go, man, here's the paper, here's some more chemicals. And I'm like, awesome. You know, so he wow. was hooking me up and I was helping him out too. Wow. So you were responsible for Remy getting sponsored. I, I, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Okay. But you skating. know, his skills, his yeah. skating skills. Oh, you know, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You ever mess with uh, doing it the old school way nowadays? You ever go back to... Uh, I've been messing around shooting film, but I don't develop it anymore. No, but take uh, it to CVS or something. Y- yeah, I just take it to the lab. <laughs> okay. you know? But it's been fun tinkering around with a film camera. Yeah. And shooting black and white. And I want to do a zine. A zine? Yeah, just like fun little zine. I, you know, I was going to bring my camera. I forgot. I just got distracted. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry, how serious. That, I guess it goes to show how serious I am with my idea. <laughs> <laughs> so... You said growing up, you would skate around OC, mm, yeah, Marina Del Rey Park. Yeah, um, so when I was uh, like around 12 years old, my mom would drop me off at the parks every weekend. Mm-hmm. My first one was Skatetopia and Buena Park. Mm. Just loved it. Oh, my God. I could just remember like the first few times. I was just like, I'm in heaven. This is amazing. And just seeing everyone shredding and just the half pipe. And there were some other bowls that were really fun to skate. And then I would go to the Big O every weekend too. And my mom would just drop me off. I'd be there all day, come home, just, I was out. Yeah. You know, just crash. And, you know, I'd see all the early legends like Dwayne Peters and Burt Lamar. And I got to go to a couple Gold Cup series contests and like Dave Andrecht, you know, doing the big backside air and, um, you know, all those guys like Steve Olson and mm. just, it was like, really exciting to see like Ellen, Alan Gelfand doing the ollies and like you're just like wow what is going on this isn't like just I'm in, I'm in heaven yeah. you know like you're seeing all this go down and and so uh, I got to go to Marina, Marina Del Rey Skate Park two times okay and one of the times I was there it was an all day th- mish I was sitting over by the dog bowl and there's this little bowl that was in front of it and I was just taking a break and there's this girl that was like just shredding you know and I'm like and she goes, hey, get out of the way. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> or basically just like, hey, move. You know what I'm like? And she was doing like these ollies to like, you know, like getting it going. I was like, okay. I was like, damn it, man. I was like, kind of like, wow, she's really good. And then just, I skated off and I didn't know anything. I was like, whatever. This girl's really good. Cause she had long black hair. Yeah. And so the next month, the skateboarder magazine came out and it was Christian and soy <laughs> doing a big ollie in the brown bowl. <laughs> And I'm like, that's, no, oh, it's a dude. <laughs> that's him. Yeah. And I was like, that, wow. <laughs> it's Christian Soy. It's my first experience of Christian Soy at the, at the age of 12. Thought he was a girl. Thought he was a girl and then shredded. Shredded. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. So was sponsorship even on your radar or anything? No. No, you no, it was never going to be on my radar. No. That's why I chose photography. <laughs> <laughs> and then what, how did you even, what was it like? Well, we, just, we were talking about Big Brother, right? Yeah, well. Oh, no, this Power. Is still, this is power, pre-Power Edge. Power Edge. You know, and so I got into skating and I got out. Getting into mischief as you do as a young teen. Mm. Got into punk rock music. Mm-hmm. Then drifted away with all the circle of people that was around because they were just getting into trouble. And I'm just convinced that skateboarding saved my life, you know? Because all the people at that time when I was a kid got into either really drugs or jail. Right. And I just went the other direction, mm. never turned back. and uh, And then from there... Just uh, skated. I'm trying to remember. I'm kind of drawing a little blank right now. Yeah. Sorry, but no, um, you're good. And kind of as time went on, I got interested in photography, mm. and then just kept going. And I was at the time I was working a graveyard shift job and what doing what I could do to help around the house with my mom. What graveyard shift? What were you? It doing? was a stock in a grocery shelf some somewhere in Irvine. Oh, okay. Oh. So I'd do that in the middle of the night. Go home, sleep wake up for a few hours, shoot, go home, take a nap. And just, there was a period of time, like, I don't even remember. I think I had dreamt a dream, you know? So it was just <laughs> very little sleep and just going, going, going and never turning back and just knew that it was going to work out. Oh, wow. Oh, you had, you had it in your mind. And in my mind is going to work out. Who are you shooting at that point? Just, just friends? Just friends, you know? And that's kind of like when I started meeting Remy mm. and other people. And there was this place called Sign In Bowl. 
where they're they're this crazy couple, Dan and Ruth, <laughs> and uh, Cerritos. They had a pool that they drained, and they let people come skate there. Like at their home? Yeah, at their home. Yeah, yeah they rented it and crazy couple and they, and they had a weird they had then schmidt brought his ramp over there and gave it to them and they p- put it up and it was just a were mess. they like charging people to come no, in and skate they, like, just, they cool. just opened up the doors they were yeah. cool and you know people like ron emery would be there from guitar player from tsol and psycho day was like another legend from orange county at the time <laughs> <laughs> he was known for like doing like coffin rides grinding you know oh like, wow and, and, and I'm just going for it like <laughs> Did so, you know crazy Eddie? How would he drop in? Yeah. They would just push him. Oh, they were <laughs> pushing him. <laughs> they push him into the- so it was just, you know, just pretty. This why antics, just fun yeah, yeah. shit. Yeah. yeah, skateboarding antics. Right, you know? okay. And then I met Alex Schroeder at, at some point. I don't know if this is the, the time frame is matching up, but mm-hmm. then I met Alex Schroeder. I was trying to start making zines myself. Mm. And then he, he's like, hey, I got a zine and, you know, maybe you want to contribute some photos because he was doing his own little thing up in Monrovia covering his scene. Hmm. I'm like, yeah, sure. And then he invited me up to his place and he had this most insane dark room at his, at his folks house. And uh, so and then I, that just kind of led to that. And he started working at Power Edge and then he got me in the door there. And Power Edge was, was it a big magazine back then? Like it was just a no, small little. It was small, you know, okay. like, I think there were three magazines at the time and it was definitely the one that was going to go first when the recession hit okay <laughs> was, was it just a skate magazine yeah yeah oh okay yeah. so it was before my time so i don't even know yeah. it was power edge but it was cool because we had like photographers like dan sturt shooting for it amazing and sin is you know who has he's passed away since but he was another incredible photographer christian hmm. klein and christian klein okay and uh but yeah they were like the I just did the darkroom work and I was lucky if I got a picture in there and, you know, so I was just kind of niche, slowly niching my way in. A little behind the scenes. Yeah, little just trying to make, do the office work and mm-hmm. dealing with all the antics. Okay. There's probably a lot of stuff that, you know, you don't need to hear. <laughs> <laughs> did you do any of the writing for it? I didn't. No, no I was doing all the darkroom work and mm. then whatever we needed, shipping and stuff like that. And, which sort of helped me set up for when we, when I became in the circle of Big Brother magazine. Because mm-hmm. hmm. uh, with Big Brother, I was selling the ads, scanning the photos, shooting the photos. <laughs> like we had to do a lot. And yeah. I was there till super late every night in the early days of Big Brother. Well, how did you go from Power Edge to Big Brother? Was there a gap in between? There, there was a gap. And yeah. I, I, I shot for Slap too. Mm-hmm. Oh, you shot for Slap? Mm-hmm. Oh, dope. You what know, was your first photo? In a magazine, I want to. I mean, Power Edge. It was but Power I'm, Edge. Okay, and it was Rodney Castle doing this Andrek at the sign and bowl. Huh. It wasn't the most prettiest looking, you know, stylistically looking, but hey, it's my first photo. You made it in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about in Slap or one of the main, one of the bigger mags? I don't remember what was my first photo per se, like, but. I know Chet Thomas had a cover on Slap that I took, mm. and Jeremy Klein, and uh, obviously there's some other photos in there, but I don't I don't remember. Wow, Jeremy Klein cover, mm-hmm. sick. Yeah, what was he doing? Just an ollie, one oh. of his trademark moves. Were you on salary for sl- uh, Slap? No. no, no, just contributing. <laughs> Contributing, I think yeah. he got like maybe twenty bucks a photo. <laughs> That's <laughs> it. Yeah, there's there no money. Mm. He did it for the love, yeah. right? Yeah. And you're getting a photo in a mag, which is cool. Mm-hmm. So it's amazing. Yeah, and so um, I was at the San Diego trade show, and I was like, "Oh, cool! I'm going to meet all the guys from High Speed Productions." And I went up there, and I'm like, "Hey, you know," and they just snubbed me. Really? What were you that, trying to do? Just be like nice and introduce myself. in the mix. Hey, I'm shooting for this magazine. Acknowledge me, you know, and like, and get me excited. Is this Power Edge? Or no, no, this slaps? is, this is still Slap. S- okay. I'm on to Slap. So Power, now you're trying to get into the... The next tier. Right, the, you know, yeah. whatever. <laughs> it didn't last <laughs> long. It, it didn't last long. Yeah. Okay. And so, and then they just, Thatcher and the, all those guys were, you know, they were running the show. It's their company. Right. So they wouldn't acknowledge me and I was like, fuck you know I was like I walked away really disappointed Mm -hmm. and right within the next hour is when I met Jeff Tremaine Mark Mickey and Sean Cliver oh wow and then they asked me if I wanted to work for Big Brother (laughs) did they know you or who you were or anything they they knew who I was you know but I was like wow it's like 
it was like the, it's just this weird like moment of like and I had this instinct on like this is gonna be a big deal I don't know how you know but I just knew that by going with them is gonna be a huge transition and, and they already come out with a couple issues one one that awful then well we had the one. little one the little okay and then Jeff's you know was getting ready to do the second one I think it was just getting ready to come out and Spike had left, mm. and then I took Spike's position. Big shoes to fill. Yeah, I know. I, Jeff, <laughs> believe me, I, I would hear it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I had Jeff just, just grilling me all the time. So, oh yeah, wow, yeah. What was it like now entering into that camp? Man, it was exciting, and that's when, like, the time when you know, like, I think I shared where I started. Like, the, hey, you want to shoot the day one cover? Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, cool, you know, and I was really nervous and like excited and, you know, and that's when Rocco gave me the credit card and for the you lantern. Know, in, in the lantern story <laughs> yeah. and then like it came out and it's so exciting. I was so stoked and yeah, but to backtrack a little bit, I was a little nervous, but excited. But then I consulted with Lance Mountain before, Hey Lance, do you think I should do this? You know? And, and he gave me this big speech, you know, like, you know, and because I think a lot of people were jealous at the time of Steve Rocco. Mm, oh. Okay. You know, obviously he was just dominating the industry. Yeah. And so it's stirring it's, it up. He really did, and he was smart. He's a good businessman. Mm -hmm. And uh, did I, Lance want you to do it, or was I, he? I think he just made the, made me think about it. You know, and I said, hey, I'll give you an answer soon. You okay. Know, I, I didn't just jump on it right away. Right away, but yeah. I, but obviously I made the right decision. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Did you know about it already? Like, oh just yes. For that one. But uh, just but just you know you but the reputation with the ads at the time and all the problems they were causing and it's like. Do I want to be affiliated with this? But then mm. I'm like, of course I do. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Wow. Checking things out. Yeah. And it was a small, uh, small team back then, right? It was just yes. Those th was it just those three, or or was it? It was like a little handful of people. It was Jeff running this ship. Okay. Art directing it. Uh, me shooting the photos, selling the ads. I'm helping scanning the photos, collecting the ad money. Hmm. Um, and then Sean and Mark were still doing the graphics, but yet they were contributing, writing, and doing it. So it was just a small crew. And then there was Earl Parker. Okay. So, and he wasn't much help. Uh, no, no. But, you know, he contributed his, you know, genius at the times before he really lost it. You know, he was oh. a great writer. You okay. Know? And I, I love him for what he's, who he is, even though I don't see him that often. But hmm. I, Wait, did you, is there a certain time where you started doing it and you're like, oh, this is going to be something? Like, I, I knew right away it was oh, going to yeah. be something big. I just had the instinct, you know, and you, you, you trust those instincts. You're like, oh, yeah, it's going to work out. And yeah. and it, it it was correct, you know, but it's just, it was really fun. I want to say like the first 10 issues before we went monthly. And then oh, we got God. bought by Flint and then it became like, oh Good my job. gosh, it was just really hard. Yeah. Because we're just like, the grind is on, you know? I felt when you're making a bi-monthly magazine, you have more time to really think and strategically plan, oh, we're going to do this, this, and this, you know, and, and it's more of an art project. Yeah. And yeah. so I think the first few issues, if anyone can get them, those are the money ones. When did, when did uh, you guys move to Flint? When did Flint buy it? I don't remember, remember the that? year. What about the, the, the magazine behind you with the turtle? Is that one of the first ones right there? No, no, no. This one... Um, that's still with Rocco. What's this? What was the turtle? Th what was that about? That's Jeff Tremaine's turtle. <laughs> <laughs> and we went to Joshua Tree to shoot that <laughs> with Steve Barrow. Whose idea was this? I, I want my turtle. I think it was Jeff's idea. And I think we'll it was, blur out Barra. Yeah, and it was all about the the, tur the turtle. I shot, <laughs> I shot that on a medium format camera too, by the way. What does that mean? Uh, it's a piece of film like this big. Yeah. Okay. And so uh, nice and sharp. That's why the turtle looks really good. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, we had to do that twice. Something happened, and Jeff and I got in a big fight. On, you had to on go all the way back out there? We had to go all the way back out there. With the turtle. With yeah. the turtle. It didn't mind, though. <laughs> the turtle didn't mind. Was happy. But yeah. what about Bear, though? He's probably like, dude, what the hell? Did you get the shot? I don't remember if he was. He could have been any skater. Uh, yeah. True. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, <laughs> it's part of the legacy. Yeah. He went on to do pretty good, great things, right? Oh, yeah. Would you guys bicker a lot at, the, at Big oh, Brother? Oh, God, yeah. Jeff and I used to f physically fight. Really? Like, <laughs> over fight? ideas and, like, the dominance of, like, what was, this is the idea. And I'd be like, no, this is the idea. And then also just fight. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Literally. He, 
that motherfucker owes me like six pairs of glasses. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> Who would usually win? Him. <laughs> so, but it sounded like fun at the same time. You guys oh were, yeah, we're you like know, brothers, butthead. right? Brothers, dude. Yeah. Come on, yeah, yeah. I'm, we're still best of friends today. You guys did Big Brother videos. Oh God, yeah, right. Remember those? Yeah, oh, that's yeah. what started the revolution. Yeah. Just think, if we were to have the the foresight to document everything about Big Brother magazine, we would have been the original reality show. That's true. Yeah. 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 Seriously. Yeah, it's too bad we didn't have that foresight and, uh, yeah. We had a hard enough time just making a magazine. And like you said, when you went monthly, it, it just yeah. it was even harder. But if you look back at it, it's like Big Brother was the internet before the internet. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. It really was because mm. all, anything bad was in Big Brother. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, and it was just so funny. Like, here's a little story. Like, you know, when we, um, we got newsstand distribution, finally, and we were so excited and we decided we were just gonna turn it up and just create the most crazy cover ever and it's just gonna work. Everyone's gonna love it. Mm -hmm. And it totally backfired on us. And it was this shot where Steve Olson's all, dressed as a devil, alling over burning Bibles. <laughs> oh. oh. Yeah, and I think they, the newsstand distributor sent back all the mags, like, they want nothing to do with it. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude. And me, and I, the guys at the office don't deal with the day to day going to the field and I took the brunt of it. Oh you did. Everyone and it was just like melt it's just freaking me out. I had this moral dilemma like what are we doing? And then like and then it's when everyone was just in the office was making fun of me and drawing like cost six 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 and oh, no. like, oh, me as the devil. And this, it was so bad. Ugh. And it was like we thought it was the greatest idea and it turned out to be the dumbest thing we could have probably done. Wow. But looking back, it's pretty funny. Did they stop with, they not want the magazine at all anymore after that? Like, no, 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 kept no. going. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, it was just the beginning. Just the beginning, just okay. The beginning. <laughs> We're just getting started. <laughs> but it all worked out though. Did they accept the next issue after that yeah, in the newsstands? I, I don't remember what the next issue was, hmm. but yeah, it was, you know. It all died down. Yeah. Huh. You know, our magazine used to get made where they would print porno magazines. <laughs> oh. In the early days. Okay. That's the, that's the only place that anybody would accept it. Why? It's just, because the, the content, content, the content was just so you know with nudity and yeah. drugs. Subject use. matter. Yeah, subject matter was pretty risky. Male nudity. Huh. <laughs> what about the Knoxville thing? About remember he uh, shooting himself with the uh the gun and everything with the bulletproof vest? Yeah, the self that defense was, article that he wrote. Right. Yeah, that was, right. The, that was yeah. kind of Knoxville's first introduction into Yeah. I remember him and I went on a trip to uh, Texas. It was a town called Taylor, Texas, near San Antonio. Mm, Jamie Foxx is from there. Is he? Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> FYI, a little tidbit. That's yeah. cool. And like, I'm like, I don't know him. And I'm like, we're on the flight. And I'm like trying to be nice and talk to him. And he's just like, man, you like to chat a lot. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. And like, I'm just trying to be nice. You know, I'm yeah. trying to get to know you. You know, I'm going to be hanging with you for the next few days. And, um, so the next morning we start out and he just was just being a dick and we're in, I'm driving and, and he, he said something and, and I just go, I just, just like, man, if you just continue this, we're going to fight. <laughs> that you said that. Yeah. And he goes, we'll make sure the camera is rolling. <laughs> I was like, fuck you. Like, wow. Fuck you. Put it in a drive and I get to the restaurant. I call Jeff and I'm yelling at him like, who are you? What's going on? I don't like this guy. And <laughs> Wait, how did he even get come into the scene? <clears throat> I think Dan Field introduced him. Dan Field is a friend, of, a mutual friend of everyone's. And he introduced him into Big Brother because you know, Jeff knew him. Mm -hmm. And so. What, just to do crazy shit? Basically. Yeah. <laughs> But I knew when he did the shot himself with the with the the gun, mm -hmm. the, the thirty eight. It was. Oh, was it? I knew he was going to be famous. Oh, you did. I had that one of those one of those one of those instincts. Like, holy shit! Wait, that's the, a viral video moment now. That guy's going to be famous. Oh yeah! And sure enough, he became Johnny Knoxville. Johnny Knoxville. Were you there when he did all that stuff? Oh no way! I didn't want nothing to do with it. <laughs> no way. We weren't allowed to go. No. No, we were just, we're like, no, nah, we're not. So he had to kind of do it on his own and submit it. I think Is Loomis kind of filmed it. Hmm. Loomis Fall filmed it. Hmm. That's why it's kind of sketchy and kind of. Not that great. Yeah. <laughs> What's kind of Broken. the charm. Sure. Wow. I remember that being huge. Mm. That article. I remember um, 
our first video premiere was on the soundstage in uh, Century City. Hmm. Nice stage. They filmed a, the scene, uh, Pulp Fiction, where where they go into the the, the car uh, cafe. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, Where there's uh, John Travolta. And, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah, they're, yeah. they're mm-hmm. doing the dance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the stage that we sh- we had the premiere at. Okay. Oh. Obviously, that set wasn't there. But. Right. So, we have our first premiere. It's going great. And all of a sudden, full chaos just unleashes in the place. There's these scissor lifts, you know, on the side. And the BMXers got on it, and they were all riding on the, and it was just, I turn, and I'm like, holy shit. I'm like, I run to go get help to, like, to try and to stop this. And we turn the corner, and it, it is, like, one of those moments where everything just turns into slow motion. I'm just <laughs> trying to, and they drove the scissor lift off the loading dock. And it was just, like, <laughs> holy, it just was just chaos. It's like, like pirates or something like a war <laughs> going it was just the most craziest moment ever and that's for the big brother premiere the first big brother premiere you couldn't do the premiere there again i assume yeah we had to come back the next day ga- next day and i had to mop the entire stage because everyone pissed on it and <laughs> yeah. oh, oh my, my god, god. Dude. <laughs> it was it was bad <laughs> But you guys did a lot of crazies. You guys even had, you had the Bong Olympics. Oh. Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That this was, was my, this is when like weed was like illegal. That was my idea. Was it your <laughs> idea? I credit for that. You guys literally like had like rented some warehouse and like just it was it was the Olympics for taking bong rips. Yeah. It was uh, but I think we did it again and then that's when it kind of got sketchy. Yeah. The first one was fun because we uh there was this this guy that would come around world industries world industries. His name was Fleck. Okay. He was a crazy Indian man, huh. and he built the bleachers for everyone. So we made it like it's a real event. So we had bleachers, and and I remember Jeff was just hating on it the idea the whole time. I'm like, listen, this is gonna be a great event. Watch. <laughs> and sure enough, it was went off perfectly. Was it in the Big Brother video, or was it just an article? It was an article featured in the magazine, but okay. yeah, it, there was some moments in the video. It wasn't okay. Okay. It wasn't big. It's right. nothing like you know, like last five minutes in a video. It's just a highlights. Okay, who was participating in it? Captain Captain Stoney, there yeah. was Captain Stoney, <laughs> John Thomas, uh, Billy Valdez. <laughs> um, I think Cream was there. What? Um, a lot of people. A lot of yeah. all the all the guys were there. Yeah. Who, who won? Captain Stoney. No. <laughs> John Thomas. <laughs> yeah. Who the hell is Captain Stoney? <laughs> <laughs> he was a character that we developed in the magazine. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but I heard a rumor that somebody, it might have been you, was like literally in another room with like a police scanner. That was the second one. Okay. And we did that one in downtown LA, mm. which is now the arts district. Oh, okay. Like around second street, mm. you know, but yeah, that was like, at that time, like, this isn't fun anymore. This is scary. Sketchy. Yeah. It yeah. sucked. I mean, you literally have a warehouse full of weed and people weed, taking- it's totally illegal. Right. It could have been bad. Yeah. Could have been. But wait, what exactly happened? Like how- Everyone it, got high. Like, <laughs> like, was it all at the same time and just snap bowls or something yeah, like that? Yeah. I, I guess, you know, they would bring it out and like, there's they had a little competition who could take the biggest hit <laughs> so stupid <laughs> but it's still like amazing at the same time it's though. totally amazing, it's amazing but it's so dumb you know <laughs> wow oh my god did you guys invite uh, high times magazine no no this is pre you know they didn't even know they probably saw the idea and ran with it you know mm. oh did they actually do bong olympics as well i don't think so at that time no this is no a, this is just a stupid idea you yeah. know and we just ran with it you know it was big brother i know it's amazing. How did you, how did you guys come up with the names for the video? <laughs> like shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Does, can, doesn't seem that hard. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. But if you if you see it, the, the 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 naming of the video, it's the same way as Jackass. Yeah. Oh, yeah so the, right. that format stuck, and it kind of became the format for Jackass. Like, I feel like Big Brother was the catalyst for a lot of different things. It sure Jackass. Was. Yeah. And, yeah. Wait, like, how yeah. was, was was Viva, where where does Viva La Bam come into that, that Raj? Was because of Jackass. Was the because of ja- that they got from the alligator in the kitchen. Because it was oh it was, oh so that stemmed from Big Brother. Yeah, we Jack, said there was, there was, was stemmed from Big Brother. Yes, 
Yeah, and then that, and then Bam's yeah. Viva La yeah, Bam. Yeah, then that. probably MTV yeah. gave him the hey, we'd like to do a show with you. Right, CKY and Big Brother. Yeah, the two, the two worlds is you know, yeah. Obviously, Bam was doing the CKY stuff. True, we were doing our crazy stuff. Right, and I think what like Jeff was like, hey, we should. Uh, I think that's when he was him, Spike, and PJ were figuring out the idea. Like, hey, we want to do this TV show. Okay, and. Um, which apparently, like the first, what I've heard, the first few pitches were terrible. Oh, were they? Like Spike would take it to HBO and it was just butchered it. Oh. <laughs> They're like, it'll never work. Right. Oh. Yeah. Like, so, uh, but it, 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 the home was MTV and that's what it was meant to be. You yeah. Know? Anything else with Big Brother that we should know about? I mean, we covered Bong Olympics. So we covered uh, ten years of it. It's yeah, where do you want to go? It's a whole documentary if you want to yeah. watch it. Yeah, well, we got the know, guy right here. Did you see the documentary? Uh, I didn't. It's on Hulu. Is it? Yeah. I'll go watch it tonight. You want to come back tomorrow? Do like, yeah. <laughs> you have more questions? <laughs> I'm sure you got a lot, but like, was there any like specific confrontation you had someone through the magazine that you you put them in there and they were like, nope, not, I'm not cool with this. I don't really remember. I'm sure it happened a lot, though, huh? No, I think people people were pretty aware, like you know what, you know. Probably they were just upset with the captions after the fact. Yeah. Oh, the captions. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Was that kind of a collective effort? The captions. Or? That's not on me. That was uh, the, the 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 writers, you know, and some of them, you know, they're funny. I just, you know, it's got to have a sense of humor. Yeah, it's I tough. mean, that's what Big Brother was all about. True, and whether you accept it or not. Jerry Fowler's interview. Remember the opening spread. Oh, so yeah, okay, yeah. What was this? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I knew uh, there was something else. Oh, there was a lot. Right, no. <laughs> just, you just gotta like we just. I, gotta I was spark. there for this one. Oh, you were. Yeah. So okay. we're doing Jerry Fowler's interview, and I was shooting his opening portrait. Mm. And I used to do a lot of these in my garage when I lived in Redondo Beach. Okay. And so we had this my bike and handle this this plastic chicken. Yeah, because you wanted Jerry to bring his dog and he's like, I'm not bringing my dog all the way up to fucking LA. Yeah, so we got a chicken and we lit it on fire. <laughs> what? One of those chicken with the long necks? Yeah. And the, okay. It's like the he, fake feathers all over it. And so we lit it on fire and it set off the uh, the fire alarm and, and so the next thing the fire department is at my house. But we got the photo. You have it <laughs> in your garage? In the garage, yeah. Well, when you were setting it up, I'm like, you should probably get like some towels or a fire extinguisher or something. It's like, oh, it'll be good. <laughs> Boom! Yeah. <laughs> it was bad. As soon as, he, as soon as he lit it, the flames hit the ceiling and <laughs> spread on the ceiling. Oh. No, yeah, it was serious. But I, we got the shot. <laughs> <laughs> My house burnt down, but we got the shot. Yeah. yeah. Was it a house? or Was it an apartment? Con it was a condo. What did the sprinklers go off and yeah, everything? Yeah, you park the cars. Yeah. No, 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 no uh, sprinkler. No. But, so I guess if a car was to catch on fire in the middle of the night, you want the fire detector to, to go off. Yeah, so yeah. Huh. Instead, I lit it on fire. Did you tell the fire department I got the shot? I don't think I did, <laughs> but <laughs> don't, don't worry, I got the shot. Yeah. What was the craziest thing you did, pretty much, for, for Big Brother? I don't know. There was a lot of things, you know. It's just harder to, to, to take what direction that would have been, but I just, I, I just feel like the probably the tours, you know, mm. or and uh, maybe the the drug stuff was like. If you look back, you're like, yeah, I don't think I'd do that today, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. Right. Well, it's a different time today yeah, as well. I'm, I'm in a different space in my life. Yeah. So it's yeah like, and also the landscape is different too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just, I, that type of magazine could not live today. It's true. No. A lot of <laughs> magazines can't live today. Yeah. Well, obviously, because they don't print them anymore. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. just, <laughs> just the content was just like, oh, jeez. But did they do four Big Brother videos? Yeah, we did four, and we were going to make a fifth one. And that's when the whole thing exploded. Oh, seriously. It came to an end. Why did it end? Uh, you know, I just think, uh, ran its course, ran its course, you know, and just, I think, I'm uh, sure going to Larry Flint's yeah, didn't help, didn't help. And it's just skateboarding was changing and, uh, people were just weren't happy with it anymore. Mm -hmm. Just weren't getting the advertising support that we needed. Hmm. And, uh, I was totally burnt out. Oh, you, you know, were. yeah, I was, I was like, seven days a week. I mean, come on, the human body can only take so much and it's hard and, you show up to a spot back then, they're like, oh, I can't skate this because someone did this on it. And I'm like, <laughs> come on, dude. Like, I drove out to Fullerton right now. Yeah. So what the Mark Gonzalez already had a great photo on? Let's, let's shoot another one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a better one. We'll do something better. So there was like, what was it? Crap. Number two. Boob and boob shit. And shit, was, shit. Sh Wee Man was on the first one. Yeah. Johnny Lee County was on the second one. Okay. Dave Carney was on the third, and I was on the fourth. 
<laughs> dressed in a diaper on a cross. <laughs> <laughs> what a sight. Yeah. Did Probably. you have to get talked into that? Yes. Or? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't my idea. Sure. Uh, sure. But it was part of the... Uh, the uh, we had a competition where we got drunk. Mm. Was there? I forgot the specific, the name of it. Drunk Olympics. I don't know what it was called. <laughs> I'm sorry, but we all got super just pounding beers at the beers, shot after shot. Okay. Obviously f- vomiting, and then just we had to do like the you know the the course, and there's like different things we had to do, and one of them was like where. Is the the Jesus Christ race? You know, we had like the cross and Johnny Knoxville like hitting us with the whip yep. and uh, tug of war and yeah, it was a rough night. <laughs> <laughs> Whose backyard we guys shoot those in? Huh? That was in Mark McKee's backyard in, oh, Culver, yeah. in Culver City. Talented guy. Oh Mark gosh, McKee. yeah, he's insane. What's the backstory behind the Johnny? Is it Johnny Lee Con- Con- County? Or? Yes, Johnny Lee County yeah. was. Uh, for the longest time, he was trying to get sponsored. He's this guy, die-hearted man from South Central, mm-hmm. loves skateboarding. And Mark Oblo was like, hey, you guys got to check this out. This guy's trying to get sponsored. Um, he showed us this video, and it was like, whoa, who is this dude? Okay. Just skating on his driveway. <laughs> and, you know, in front of his house in South yeah. Central. <laughs> right. And so I was like, wow, we got to do a story on this guy. And it, it just for long. It just took the courage for me to, to do it because I knew it would be going into a rough neighborhood. And so I just kind of figured if I was going to do this, I had to go by myself. Okay. And I had to be there at ten o'clock in the morning because everyone would still be asleep. <laughs> okay. You know, so and I you, I just somehow figured that out and I did it. <laughs> got in, got out, and uh, and I, to me, he's just part of the. For me, he's part of the legacy of Big Brother Magazine, mm-hmm. and, and I just love his spirit. Yeah. And uh, so we did the the interview and the story, and it went great. And I'm like, we gotta get him for the video, right? So I went back uh-huh. and just filmed all his footage. And he loved punk rock music, and he he had never been to a concert. He still lived with his mom and dad, hmm. very poor. And so he we had the premiere of number two mm-hmm. at the El Rey Theater which by the way a riot broke out afterwards oh did it <laughs> all the windows in the neighborhood got busted out we showed up what was that with that was, no that wasn't in the third video when we showed up on the uh, in the Larry Flint's li- limo okay <laughs> <What>? <laughs> now did Johnny know he was gonna be on the cover I don't think so we kind of kept it as a secret okay but the, the, what was really cool is we had the premiere. He wore his Devo outfit that he purchased from like the Devo website, you know? So it was like OG original. He loved Devo. Okay. And so we're at the premiere. The Smut Peddlers are playing and he's just so pumped. And he was in the pit, just oh. going crazy, happy as can be. And he just, I just remember him just with the, a smile from ear to ear, like, thank you. This is the best night of my life you know and like yeah and sure enough he didn't have underwear on oh <laughs> and his Devo suit got torn (laughs) (laughs) people were exposed a little more than they were ready for (laughs) I just remember like during the premiere when his image would come on the screen you would jump on stage and he's just like yes yes just pumped like the best time oh my god it's just like that's it that to me that's perfect you know I, I just gave something to that guy yeah and it made me feel good to just see him that happy right wow. that's better than anything a hundred percent better awesome. than anything yeah did you ever keep in contact with them throughout the years or anything i reached out to him last year just hmm. to say hey i found i tracked him down and we were trying to get him for the big brother documentary but it didn't work out we mm. had too many people already and okay uh, I don't think I hope he's doing well I think he had some health issues he was dealing with so oh, wow. I was like uh-huh. I'm bummed here and, hmm. but uh, he works at Target lives in Long Beach okay uh, hey at least you gave him a hell of a night <laughs> yeah a good moment for sure seriously yeah. and being involved yeah. in the Big Brother video too it's incredible yeah it was cool um, did you f- so you were shooting photos and filming stuff too for yeah. Big Brother yeah I think the uh, Johnny Lee was like my first introduction to making videos. Mm. I made, I directed his part. Okay. 
And I just remember coming back from the editing bay that night, just so pumped. Like just that there was that energy. You're just like, I couldn't sleep. You know, I'm like, <laughs> this is what I want to do. Wow. I was just, let's make more, you know? And like, I was so stoked, you know, and just, and I was shooting with my super eight camera as well as, you know, VHS and, it was cool. Huh. Yeah, I just loved it. Wow. We were saying, we were talking earlier and you were saying that a lot of these dudes would like, you know, iconic dudes would come up to you and be like, Hey, you shot my first photo in a mag or cover yeah. or something. I mean, what, what is that like? You were talking, it's like Kareem Campbell and all these guys. Like Eric Ellington. Eric Ellington. Uh, I did a trip with Earl Parker. It was called Floyd Country. And we just did this trip from like, from California to Vegas to Arizona, and just a little trip. Mm -hmm. And uh, Eric Ellington later on goes, hey man, you were the first person to ever publish a photo of me. And I was like, wow, really? Wow. And look what he became something Seriously. huge. You know? yeah. And Kareem Campbell was another one. Ron Bertino was another one. Wow. And I'm sure there's more, I just, I just don't remember, I don't know. But it must be <laughs> such a great feeling though. It I mean, nice those are that. iconic. Yeah, dudes. Absolutely. You don't remember me though. But, you know, <laughs> did you, hey, did you have photos of Big Brother though? Did you have photos of Big Brother? He wouldn't publish them. I don't know what happened to the Nolly back heel on the bank. No, I, I honestly don't remember. I just remember shooting. Are you sure it wasn't? You. Are you sure it just wasn't video? No, it was photo. Yeah, maybe it was Socrates. No, it was you. <laughs> I remember you laying on the ground, like trying to get the the right angle. The right wow. angle. Lying I just, low. Spot. To me, it was more about shooting with you. And these other iconic, you know, people in the industry than getting my photo in the mag. It was like, well, I'm shooting with Rick Kosick right now. I'm yeah. filming with this dude right now. Like, it's, it, you know. I wish I could remember that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Were you guys making a lot of money at that time? No. Like through the magazine? No. No? Hmm. Just, the I'm, magazine wasn't really making much money. That's why they sold it to Flint. Oh, okay. It was losing money in the beginning. Oh. So if you watch the Big Brother documentary now on Hulu, you'll learn all this. Oh, okay. Like I said, you got to come back tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll, come back. I'll, watch, I'll go watch it Part tonight. two next week, guys. Yeah. <laughs> when Big Brother went out of business and you and the jackass thing came about, how was there a gap in between there as well? Or did well, you guys go right into Jeff had left the magazine and started Jackass. Okay. He was taking a chance. He wasn't sure if it was going to work, you know, and he just was going for it. And like, and mm -hmm. so I was still there and I was like, Oh man, kind of like, you know, things are changing, but still wrote it out. I was still shooting for the magazine, but yet going out filming for Jackass. Mm -hmm. And it was the f the first seasons of Jackass were the funnest ever. Yeah. So imagine. much laugh, laughter, and you're with your bros, and going in the Ellie River, jumping the fence, totally no permits, <laughs> <laughs> breaking all the production laws, you know, yeah. essentially. Was and it, then Was it planned out at all, or you guys just went... Well, yeah, it was, we had the idea, you know? Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, but then, then Knox, what was the LA River one? What was that? Knoxville was going to jump it on roller skates. Oh, yeah. And so, because uh, obviously we had the idea from when Jeremy Klein did it. Okay. So it was kind of like a borrowed idea. We'll go and, you know, have Knoxville, or he probably wanted to do it. And, you know, but then he ended up wrecking his ankle. Yeah, did he break his ankle? Oh. I think he broke it or sprained it or tore a ligament or something serious. Okay. Huh. I'm on a ladder in the middle of the uh, of the river getting the shot and he just that was one take and that was it. <laughs> one take. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> and that was the introduction of Bunny the Lifeguard too with Chris Pontius. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he just happened to have some women's top, bikini top and he had ears in, in the back of his truck and <laughs> I don't, and it just, it just created on the, on a whim. On a whim. Know? Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Wow. Just had it in his truck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At that time, he used to live in his truck. Uh -huh. mm. So. Okay. Did cool. he have a, a Cribs where he, yeah. <laughs> he was like showing people around his truck? Yeah, pretty much. He just, he just showing his truck. This is where I live and my crib. Yeah. <laughs> Did you think that Jackass was going to turn into anything? <sighs> I, I really felt that when we were making the pilot, I just knew it was going to be a big deal. I guess once again, those instincts that you follow and you kind of had, had a hunch, you're like, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, I just knew it was going to be big. And this was a pilot for MTV or was this a yeah. pilot to pitch to networks? 
Wow, good question. I don't the two. This is the pilot for MTV. This is the first. I imagine you can create a pilot out of the just the CKY footage and yeah, like the Big Brother stuff. The, oh, Big yeah. Brother footage, yeah. yeah, like the footage of Wee Man uh, dressed as Oompa Loompa. We had a bit, and I think in the last video, uh-huh. all that footage went over into Jackass. Oh, okay. So you guys borrowed, borrowed. Nice. And built it out more. And mm-hmm. I built, once again, in my garage in Redondo Beach, like a, a, a psych wall. And then we had, like, you know, we would watch the, the video. And like, all right, we got to learn these dance moves just like it, you know. And so I mean, we did it. And, oh. <laughs> <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Sounds like fun. Sounds like you guys were having a blast. We had a blast. Seriously. Yeah, it was cool, man. It was good times. And when did they start fucking with you? <laughs> right away, yeah. right away. <laughs> Bro, it was right out of the gates yeah. but I think that was a lure also is like you know it's not only the cast but it's also the people behind the scenes that are yeah. that are getting absolutely worked as well how many times have you inspected the nuts mm. <laughs> <laughs> probably, more than, probably more than I care there's a time when, there's the time he punched me so hard that I almost barfed oh Seriously? my yeah. god it was just like oh, I just walked it was in a bar and Walked out and I was like, oh, I was dying. <laughs> oh, you know, we need to get sack like skating. It's just painful. Oh, yeah. Ugh. Were you like scared going into a show sometimes? No, you know, you, you, you know what to expect. <laughs> <laughs> you learn to show your respect by holding your nuts. Or- yeah, well, yeah. Still, t- still to this day, we do that. When he's around, I'm like, oh, you know, like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't trust him at all. <laughs> It's kind of like you just don't know what's going to happen because they could be saying, hey, we're going to film this, but that's right. really not what they're filming. They're right. filming the you veteran. getting or somebody getting worked some other way. Like the hand, yes. right, you know, the, the hand that came out. <laughs> yeah. People would walk the, by. And it was sh- called a high five. The yeah. huge hand would <laughs> go and knock the shit out of somebody. Bam was not ready for it. <laughs> and he just like, poop, off his feet. <laughs> it was amazing it was like that was money yeah it was a fun time it could be nerve wracking being yeah. around all you guys yeah that's why you know in the past like, like a lot of the cast are like we're all scared and you know we just don't know what's gonna happen and yeah you know and I just I just you know that's say the fun of it all though yeah I go I go you guys if this ever is to happen again you're dead <laughs> <laughs> Were you scared for other people? No. No. <laughs> well, I mean, you guys did some ridiculous stunts. Yeah. Like, were, you weren't scared of people getting, like, hurt. Sometimes I'm, I, I'm scared of watching people, like, try stuff, even skating sometimes. Well, it's I like, mean, this guy might get, might get fucked up in front of my eyes. Yeah, you know, there were, there were injuries, like, Aaron McGee, he got really hurt, like, uh, in 3D, where we're, uh, he's coming down the, the mountain on a, I think it was a shopping cart mm-hmm. on snow. And he f- f- did like a backflip and broke his neck. Oh, dude. Wow. And uh, it was like, oh, God. Yeah, it was like. Serious. Serious. Because yeah. a lot of the stuff isn't really planned. I mean, with like a stunt crew, right? Yeah. I'm sure when you got to the movie stage, yeah, maybe. They, they troubleshoot. Yeah, there's, yeah, they sure. help, you know, definitely. There's a stunt guy, especially like a bad grandpa. But we had a stunt yeah. guy oh, okay. there. Because some of the stunts were pretty serious, you know, when Knoxville's going through a window. Right. How to, you know, make sure you don't have your head up or else you're going to take your skull <sighs> off, you know, like. Be scary. Yeah, you don't want to get scalped. No. Was it hard? Like, I remember for some reason, the Chris Pontius one, we got a snake bite his dick. I think he liked it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like crazy because like you have to film so like close in. Uh, you know, we're not that close. You know, there's <laughs> yeah, a yeah. prime lens and you just kind of zoom in and we're, it's not like we're like lying there. <laughs> right, right, right. But like, are you yeah. clinching? Like, are you like, oh my God. This- you have to be a yeah. little uh, bit. I, I'm that particular one. I don't think so. That for me, I was just like, ah, whatever. You know, <laughs> Chris is one of my favorites. Just his yeah. demeanor and yeah, he's, he's very just, charming. Yeah, his intros and stuff. Yeah, would be incredible. I just liked it when uh, when we we're doing Wild Boys, and the engine was well lubed, and we were just a machine and cranking out the funniest stuff, and just learning about life. And I just, to me, I look back at that as like that was the dream job that anyone could ever ask for. So Jackass ended, and then they did a spinoff, Wild Boys. Yes. Chris Pontius and Steve-O. Correct. And you guys would go out into nature, mm-hmm. like safari style, Essentially. and just go- Around the world. Around the world. Yeah. I mean, it sounds Wildlife like a great- parks. 
Was that a lot of wildlife parks? Yeah, South Africa. Uh, they went to South Africa first, and there's like there's a lot of. I wasn't. I didn't get to go on that one, but uh-huh. I went to Kenya. Wow, and it was just an eye opening experience. Wait a minute, they would have another guy on the show, long hair, older guy. They do from Florida. Manny. 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 Yeah. From, yeah. From Miami. This is the shark guy. Okay. Right. Yeah. Sounds like, it seems like a fun experience. Uh, it was great. So Kenya was really cool. And just like, just the second night we're there, we're all camping out in the, in the, along this river and this tribe would like walk around our campground to make sure we wouldn't get killed by hyenas. Oh, wow. <laughs> they would or any your... other animal that can come in, just crush your skull right away. You know? No way. <laughs> Was it scary though? I mean, you had the well. They were no, nah, yeah, whatever. You, we were protected still. essentially, but you know, it's like I'd be like with my flash, like, "Hey, good night, wee man." <laughs> like, <laughs> like, "Good night, Rick." No you way. Know? I mean, he's like way over here. We have a space, you know, okay. but but it was like you hear the river running and huh. like th- there was a tribe that we were working with, and they were like doing some ceremonies where they were just doing like all these crazy like backflips, like they were like in a trance, like a meditative state, and. It was just bonkers, you know, just wow. to see all this stuff that, you know, we don't do in the Western world, but they yeah. get there. Yeah. Was that a bigger production crew than Jackass? No. no? A couple no, camera no. guys and a... Yeah, a few of us, but it was like maybe 15 of us going there. Seems like a lot. Yeah, well, for, for television, yeah. It's probably, yeah. It's probably normal. Oh, okay. What about the Jackass stunts where, you know, it would be like a serious, like somebody would, like Wee Man would pop out of a trunk or there would be blood on the windshield and oh, at gas stations yeah. and has to be cleaning, mm. it, cl- cleaning up the blood. And there was a bad, there was a good, bad story with that one. We did something in Hollywood where Knoxville pretended like he ran someone over and then we put like meat stuck in the radiator with hair and oh. blood and someone called the cops and next, you know, we're back at our production facility in the parking lot. And we were all on the ground. Oh, wow. Guns drawn, oh. you know? And like, yeah, we got out of it. Jeez. How did you explain yourself? I know. The way you're <laughs> well, filming a show. Well, the producers came out and explained and everything. And then, yeah, it was pretty scary. Okay. Not that we're going to get really in trouble, but it could have went bad. Yeah. 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 And you guys even did stuff where it's like, who was it? Somebody was... Kidnapping Brad Pitt? Kidnapping Brad Pitt. That was amazing. <laughs> I'm sitting right there with a video camera. Was that at Pink's? Pink's Hot Dogs in Hollywood. And everyone was just oblivious, you know, because they probably saw that Brad Pitt was standing there and then we took him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a, it was a fun, that, that was the last season of Jackass okay. TV series. And that was when all the celebrities were wanting to be a part of it. And it was really cool. And like Shaq was on it and Gene Simmons. and Wow. We got to go visit Shaq on a set that he was making a rap video, and then Wee Man picked him up. <laughs> what? Yeah, Wee Man's pretty strong. Pack picked up Shaq. Yeah, physically picked him up. Jesus, like a little forklift. Yeah. No, but when you when you're doing something with Brad Pitt, do you inform authorities at that point of like, uh, you know, hey, what? you're probably going to get nine one one calls of I Brad. Think, P- I think the the production company, uh, the producers, did say, hey, we're filming this area. Just you know. Okay. You get calls. Oh, uh, okay. Don't worry. Right. That's Brad Pitt just got kidnapped. Yeah. Brad Pitt's hot dogs. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. How did you guys come up with these ideas? Yeah. Uh, uh, Drunken nights. <laughs> <laughs> I just like anything, you know, you're probably just sitting around shooting, you get an idea and you present it and like, hey, I got this idea and I, I was lucky enough to have a couple of them come to life. I did the, the human rail, handrail. Human, human handrail. And it ended up being a cover on Big Brother magazine. Oh, yeah. The Hole in the Rail? Yeah, with Ryan Dunn and uh, Brandon, Brandon DiCamillo. Okay. And Bam. So what was the premise? Somebody was holding... They were holding the rail, uh-huh. and they are also dressed in yellow. Mm. And we would run around town and then set it up, and then they would Bam would do a trick, and we'd keep going. And that was what was really cool about Jackass. We integrated... We brought the, the skateboard world into our... Stupid yeah. shenanigans, you uh, know. Totally, and it yeah. just kind of helped, you know, st- stoke the fire. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. I was a big fan of Jackass. Yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of people were. Yeah, yeah. It was always exciting to hear, like, "Oh yeah, we had this big viewing party, you know, and we had like thirty people over and we're watching the episode." I'd be like, "Really?" And I'd be like, "Wow, <laughs> that's pretty cool." And then when they got into the movies, mm. you must have been thinking, like, "Wow, this is." going crazy like this is a it's a step up 
I mean, yeah, I mean, television to the movies. To do the movie, the first one, I don't remember how I felt about it. Really? I just, just kind of bummed like the TV show ended, so I was like, mm. oh, you know. And then we did the movie, which wasn't that big of a budget, but we killed it. Okay, yeah. You know, make... When you got a lemon, you got to make lemonade, right? Yep. <laughs> That's true. Not that it was a lemon, but I'm just, you know, saying, you know, but the other movies were, right, were number two was way better. Than oh, was one. it? Oh, I think. If you look back at it, you could tell the- Had more money to play with. More money. The production value looked better. Mm. I think overall it was just a different. Um, so the back pedal, we we're still shooting Wild Boys. Oh, okay. And Johnny Knoxville, we were in Russia, and Johnny Knoxville came out to film with us. And that's when it, it was just all cylinders were firing perfectly. And that's when they were like, hey, man, we should maybe make number two. And oh, the yeah, talk was, started. Mm -hmm, yeah. Okay. Now, is this MTV producing this or is this now moved on to like no, it's, a... they're still a part of it. I think, you know, because they, you know, it's, they own the name. Yeah. Essentially, they're part of it. Hmm. <coughs> but it's not them saying, hey, you guys should make the movie. It's, it's, it's coming from... The guys. Yeah. 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 Hmm. But the backpedal, like with Russia, that was like some of the most amazing things we've ever done. You know, like uh, we went to uh, Siberia and uh, remembering we flew in this helicopter to find these nomadic reindeer people. Okay. Like, and we landed. Oh, they're like, oh, there they are. There's no roads. <laughs> They're just out there. <laughs> Alive. Alive. And so flying in a helicopter landed. The guy greets him with food and stuff and explains to him, hey, this is what we'd like to do with you today. And, and the next thing you know, I'm sitting in their teepee. Okay. And I'm like, what? I'm like pinching myself. Is this real? <laughs> like, this is amazing. And I remember that being the fastest day that went like that. Oh, this seriously. was so much fun. Were you scared? Like these people were flying in on a helicopter into these people's turret. Like they could kill us. Sure. I guess. <laughs> but you know, I mean, the, are the people that we were working with, you know, I'm sure we would have been safe. Uh, yeah. I mean, what, they're going to kill us and then what? What, what do these people, what, like, what do they do though? What are they out there? They're just, they just live off the land. Yeah. And there's nothing out there. There's no roads. There's this, they're out there. And luckily it was summertime and it was, I had layers of shirts on mm. because like a thin cloud covered the sun. I was like, whoa, it's a little chilly. So, oh wow. And you can imagine in the wintertime it's dark and it's really cold. Mm. What did you guys end up doing with them? They, uh, they actually killed a reindeer and they ate it. And we just did some like, you know, things and like a ceremony in their teepee huh. and like some other stuff uh, around their facility. Interesting. I, I don't remember what it was, but if for anyone who knows Wild Boys, you can watch those episodes. Yeah. Yeah. I was bigger. I did watch Wild Boys. But not as much as I did Jackass. Mm. I still, because I was a fan of Chris Pontius. I mean, Steve-O is great as well, but... I did transfer over, but not for that long. I don't know. How long did that last? I think four seasons. Four seasons? Wow. Yeah. yeah. It did well. Oh, huh, okay. And then it just, it was great because like, it just exposed me to different cultures and going to India for the first time and coming home and hmm. just the things that, you know, we, we complain about. I just, that was gone. I'd never complain about things again. Like, because <laughs> like life there is way different than it is here. Sure. They have it very hard there. Wow. Wow. And it's just a very a big eye opener, you know? And it was just like, wow. I remember the first day we got there, we were on the third flight ever to fly con consecutive to Singapore. You, you, I guess you, we had, to, so it was a 17 hour flight. Okay. Landed there, did a quick shower in Singapore, got another flight. We were a day behind and then we got in these cars and immediately they were just driving us to this, we we're going to the Jim Corbett forest. Hmm to do a tiger safari. And so, uh, but we're just like, all you hear is these horns, beep, beep, beep. It's just like, it's so stressful. And our car was like, at times hitting other cars, getting clipped and it's just crazy there. It's just so many people and just- Sensory yeah. overload. Oh yeah, and it's just, we were tired. And, and I remember we pulled over, like, hey, we're gonna stop and get some dinner. And it's just like, where, are we? And it's like, I think that's the first time I ever had a panic attack. I don't know what one is really, but I was just <laughs> like, oh shit, this is fucking crazy. I'm this big white dude. Everyone's staring at me. <laughs> like, like, who is this guy? And uh, 
But I was like, I don't want to eat the food. It just, everything looked filthy. Oh, wow. wow. I'm sure the food was great. You know, but it's just, I, I, at the time I was just like, I can't do it. I can't do it. Oh, so, dude. but there was a, a one, one of the, we filmed with this tiny snake charmer hmm. in this little village. And, we're like, and, then the day, and on that day we're like, so where's the location? And the guy goes right there. And I'm like, oh shit. It's the gnarly poor. Poor in a whole nother, it's way worse than what you guys have across the street. <laughs> oh, <laughs> for sure. And these people, just like little cots, you know, and like, and just they sleep in the dirt. They're all filthy, you know, beyond you can imagine. They, they dig a hole in the ground right there so they can defecate oh, and, wow. and, and so they just cover it up. And, and all these little children just see me and they just come run. They just want to touch me because they think I'm wealthy because mm. I got a belly. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, touch this guy, you know? Yeah. And, and I'm like, I'm like, I, be, I had my camera on the tripod, everything ready to go because I didn't want to drop anything down because it's just, oh, wow. it's beyond filthy. Mm. And, but it was just, it ended up being an amazing shoot, you know, with a snake charmer and a little tiny dancer. And mm. it was, um, uh, yeah, cool memories. You didn't get sick out there. Uh, the second time I did. You did. Yeah, I, I hear about a lot of people getting sick when they go there. Yeah, it was uh, a lot of people that got sick because they ate the vegetables and stuff. And I just I brought my own snacks, mm. and I just stayed away from like any vegetables or anything that had to do with the water. Right. But the second time we we're there, where you know we stayed at these really amazing hotel chain called Taj. Hmm. We filmed Jackass Two there. We went back. Oh. And then it was like, we're at this hotel, we're getting ready to go home, and I ate some soup, and then I'm on the flight home, just all like, oh, I'm like, I'm not like, on the flight. I'm like, please, just make it home. Oh, man. I'm oh. praying, just to, and I couldn't leave my, my place for like three weeks. Three weeks you were out of Fuck. commission. I was like, man, I would go, go to the cross street for the farmer's market. I'm like, all right, I got to run home. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't, it was bad. Wow. Yeah. Just from soup? Yeah, because it's the vegetables. Oh, right, right. The water's dirty there. Yeah. I've heard a rumor, I don't know if it's true, but if you go, if you're feeling that, if you're like, you know, out of the country, mm -hmm. you get a six pack of Coca-Cola and just drink all six Coca-Colas and it supposedly mm -hmm. it just flushes you out. I mean, you can clean toilets with Coca-Cola, yeah. you know, yeah. so it's very, something's it, something in it. I believe it. Yeah. <laughs> if you go to India the third time, take a six pack. Uh, well, <laughs> I almost went back to India a couple years ago for Vice and it didn't go through and mm. I was like, uh, I was kind of glad. I was like, hey, you cool with going to India? And I'm like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I went and got my passport all renewed and then the job went away. I was like, fuck. Oh, okay. oh fuckers. Damn. So you were saying that the, when, when the Jackass 2 was going to come out was kind of overlapping Wild Boys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, but Jackass 2 had this bigger budget and sounded like it was going to be way more it was stunts good. and different things. I think Jackass 2 was really was a good production and mm. It was like once again, all cylinders are firing hard, you know, and and it was like the uh, once again, it was the snake yeah. charmer or the snake where when Pontius puts his penis through the hole, yeah. and Johnny Knox was like the magician, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. and the whole cast is right there. That was the first thing we filmed on production. Oh, really? That's the first in Florida. Dude, was there any skits that were done that were like really gnarly that never made the cut? It, it made the cut if it was good. If yeah. it didn't make the cut, it made it to 1.5 or 2.5 uh, or 3.5. Mm, I see. That. Okay. And then you get like a little backstory of why it didn't work. And okay. so you- Don Vito stuff and never made it. Yeah. Oh, really? So yeah, we originally shot the Lamborghini tooth pull with Don Vito. With Le Yank a tooth out with yeah. the Lamborghini. Oh. But we did with Danger Aaron. Okay. And so we had to redo it. And uh, yeah, it's unfortunate. Wow. Crazy. It was way funnier with Don Vito. I'm oh, sure. I've been, wow. Sounds like you guys, man. <laughs> well, how many Jackass? You were saying like Jackass 1, 1. 1.5, 2.5. How many like came out? And there's Bad Grandpa 2. And there's a Bad Grandpa 0. 0.5. <laughs> so Bad stuff. Grandpa 1, Bad Grandpa 0. 0.5, Gra Bad Grandpa 2. No, no, no. There's no Bad Grandpa Part 2. or Just 1.5. Yeah, and we just the, the stuff that didn't make the movie. Now, Bad Grandpa, you were getting the outside world... Reactions. Reactions. And, and, it, and that movie was really hard to make. Was it? Because, you know, you're building... You're trying to build a storyline with, you know... Stunts. Stunts and, like, reactions. And I remember we went out and filmed the first time, 
and then we went dark for a while because they had to figure it out you know and i think things kind of shifted and changed as it went along you know and you kind of have to follow that you know what's going to work yeah and so it's you don't know till you get out there and start doing it. Oh, so, this yeah. is we gotta we gotta adjust. We gotta adjust, change the storyline, and yeah, mm. it worked out. I think it went well. And he was getting in makeup like every day, right? He was the I old think four hours every day. Oh. Four hours. Yeah, he had to get up super early. And would you just refilm stuff if, if you weren't getting the right reaction out of people? We would do it a few times. Okay. So say like if you remember in the movie the the pageant scene, we shot that two times. It's the scene where the girl comes out, they're doing the pageant, mm-hmm. and and then the boy, we dress him up as a little girl, and he learned the whole dance routine. <laughs> okay. And we did that two times with two different groups of people. Why? Because you wanted, that's how it just works. Just didn't work, didn't. And, you know, just that's how it works, you know? Like, oh. you just can't bank, put all you your know, cars. You take reactions from the first shoot and play Yeah, with so you can just mix match. So, gotcha. so it's not like when you watch a comedy special. Those they take. Just, there's like two takes. There's like two times they do it. Right. You know, so you just kind of, get the best moments so bad grandpa it was a good movie did you work on the other movie the uh, was what the one that came out kind of recently right yeah it was at the theme park no johnny knoxville that was shot in south africa i I didn't work on that what was the last movie that you worked on it would have been bad grandpa bad Bad grandpa Grandpa. how'd you like it i loved it it was fun would you guys have to get obviously releases from the people after the stunts right you'd have to run up to them you know that wasn't my job but some of them weren't easy you know, because it's like, it's weird how you, you make these things work, you know, mm. so that obviously you're running the location and the owner's in on it. Right. But the employees are not. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or that, you know, how things, you know, the way it make, you know, whatever the story's going to get, you know, or, or go. And so you, you kind of make it work. And then <laughs> okay. some pe- some employees are like, I quit. Oh. <laughs> you know, like, but then you loop them back, they calm down and they're like, oh, okay, I'm okay. You know. Right. Like I'm going to be in a movie. Yeah. 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 Did sure. those did those people get money at all? Like, I think so. Yeah. Sure. Oh, a couple nice. hundred bucks maybe. Sure. Eh. Quick reaction. Sweeten the sweeten the pot a little bit. Yeah, yeah right. Jackass one, two, three. Three. Three D. Mm-hmm. Three D. Was that interesting filming it in three D? Yeah, it was they? hard. It was it was it was fun, but it was definitely tough, like out of the gates because the camera rigs that they have for us weren't really perfected correctly yet, you know, so they were really front heavy. And the balance wasn't right, and it just destroyed my back. Really? And they, we were doing 30-minute takes. I'm like, so I'm just holding the camera, and the camera is, is connected to some guy in the back pulling focus. And so I'm just, like, pointing it Point and, and, and getting in there. And, and it'd be like, and there'd be a guy who'd be like, all right, give me relief. And he'd pull the camera off my shoulder, and I would just fall to the ground. Oh, like, really? Gosh. Yeah, it was like... I was like, I what, get, how much do those what things weigh? Man, they're heavy. Really? Yeah, you know, they're big, big. I went to a couple of shoots you guys did, like the the jet ski in the pool, and uh, oh, that was a fun one. The um, the treadmills. Oh, in downtown LA, mm-hmm. that's like a famous commercial location spot yeah. too. What's the treadmills one? Yeah, yeah like these were treadmills all set up, and like I think uh, Seth my friend put like all zigzags on them. Yeah, so you <laughs> kind of like to run and you oh, eat geez. crap. Yeah. <laughs> it was actually where we did the gauntlet, the fire gauntlet mm-hmm. too. Oh, and, right. uh, <laughs> these stunts are just like, how can we get the most fucked up? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we'll get a bunch of treadmills, or we'll do this. Over time, they perfected the the rigs and they okay. got better. You know, mm-hmm. so they knew what to do they go these these this company at the time we're working with they had their own machine shop and they would cut the plates and oh wow and they would go back and they were fabricating everything themselves yeah Yeah. they were at the time they were like one of the premier 3d companies oh so i think for a 3d film that would have been the one you wanted to see because it's truly filmed in 3d yeah a lot of these movies are like as a conversion they do and they know how to make it look 3d production yeah stuff. this is truly filmed in 3d two lenses mm-hmm. wow two cameras yeah. pretty much right yeah, yeah two, two cameras, cameras. yeah huh so that's why the camera is like awkward and heavy and but it was cool how long would it take to make like a one jackass movie probably seven months to shoot hmm. okay maybe a little longer yeah, do you guys, how are the, do you guys like tours for for the video when it came out, right? Oh, like yes. premieres? How, yeah. Or those were probably crazy too, huh? I went on the last one. We did the, uh, we went on the European tour and I think we did a special with that. Huh. Yeah, we filmed a bunch of stuff for 3.5 or whatever. 
Yeah, that was fun. Jeez. What, what was it like coming across jackass fans? That must have been, they were probably like wanting to get punched in the face by people all the time. Well, sure. Steve will probably encounters that all the time when you go to his comedy show, kick me in the nuts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we've been that's on tour weird. with Bam when yeah. he's just, people want him to slap them. Yeah. I, I don't, that's weird. Yeah. I, I can't do that. Yeah. I'm like, no, I'm cool. Has anyone came up to you since they knew who you were? Did they come up and hit you in the nuts or some shit like no, that? No, no, I don't. <laughs> no, I Rick, don't want Rick, doesn't, Rick don't play that. No, I don't, that doesn't happen. <laughs> It's just, you know, you get your fans coming like, hey man, can I buy you a shot? And I'm like, no, nah, cool, I'm, I'm good. Because yeah, then you yeah. have to talk to the guy. <laughs> <Right>. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that sounds kind of mean, but it's like, yeah. It'll be wasted by the end of the night, probably. No, yeah. but it's like, it's like Wee Man. Like, that dude probably just can't go anywhere. No, he can't. I can't take him anywhere because he's just, hey, can, we'll be at dinner and be like, hey, can I get my picture with you? I know you're, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be that guy, but you are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, he's really good at it and he's very patient. He's like, hurry up, let's do it. You yeah. Know, does it and gives them the salute and they're on their way. They got their little Instagram selfie. We've never really met, but he seems like a really nice guy. He is. He's great. Yeah. Maybe you should have him as a guest. I Hell That would yeah. be incredible. Yeah. Let's yeah. connect that one. That'd be yeah. awesome. Yeah. Why don't you just go down the row? Since you start with Socrates, now you got me. <laughs> Maybe you should get Dave Carney next. Dave <laughs> Carney. And yep. then Sean Clyver. You already have Mark, Mark McKee. Yeah. Yep. Which was, he was great. Sean. And, and then Sean, and then maybe Earl Parker. That might okay. be kind of hard. I don't know if he'll do it. And then Steve O, Johnny Knoxville. Hey, Rocco. Rocco. Has, Rocco? What do you yeah. wouldn't do it, would he? Well, maybe. Find what about Roddy Mullen? Roddy Mullen would oh, be amazing. Wow. Yeah. Well, we've just, we've set up the next 10 weeks. Yeah. Thanks. That's great. Right. <laughs> Thanks, Perfect. Rick. Yeah. Just call me Producer Rick. Yeah. Producer yeah. Rick. You're hired. <laughs> okay. You're hired. You know, Rab's, in, Rab's podcast? No. Yeah. yeah. We're done. You're yeah. done. You're, you're nine club now. All right, I'm well, here. I am <laughs> talking about the history, yep. but you do you help out with Rab uh, himself's podcast? Yeah, the, the bathroom, bathroom break. break. Bathroom break. How's so that going? It's fun. We've been uh, getting some pretty cool guests. You it's know, amazing. Uh, yeah, uh, next week we have London May, mm. and he tells some great stories about Danzig. Sick, because he played drums for Sam Hain. Wow. And uh, the stuff he was just telling, I was just like, oh my god. He, he tells this great story about when he met him and he's going to go audition and then he got off at the wrong train stop and he's like, I'll come get you. It's an hour away. And he, he had to borrow his mom's car to go pick him up. And I was like, and I'm thinking like, wow, Danzig had a mom. <laughs> <laughs> That's rad. It's pretty rad. You know, yeah. it's like, it's a really interesting story because London just shot this little horror film and it's pretty cool. And he's just got a great legacy of punk rock and mm -hmm. very interesting guy. Yeah. Is it like based on just music? Or? No, we, today's episode dropped. It's a. Uh, Tony Cavallero, he's the guy that played Ozzy Osbourne in The Dirt, oh. and he's in this new uh, HBO comedy series called The Righteous Gemstones. Interesting. Danny McBride's new TV show. Okay. Oh, wow. And it's an awesome show. Wow. How, so, how are you getting these guests? I just know these guys. Oh, you know them that's, all. That's yeah. why we just hired Rick. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I met Tony on The Dirt. And he's just, we just connected, right? It was like instantly, we're like, oh, this guy's awesome. He's such a cool guy, you know? Mm. But uh, unfortunately, we didn't get to, to really hang out because he left to go make this TV show that's just now airing. Oh. So you should check it out. It's a really good show. It's amazing. It's fun to do podcasts and all these people and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So would you just uh, film? I just shoot it, cameras? shoot it, and then, you know, try and get as many different guests as possible. Sure. And uh, what about editing? Uh, I'll let Chris do that part. Chris. Chris Rab. Chris Rab. I only know him as Rab. Yeah. Rab yeah. himself, right? Yeah. Rab himself. <laughs> I told him at some point I'll, I'll lift up and do it because I'm an editor too. Sure. And uh, so the backpedal, I've been an editor for uh, at least 15 more years. Mm. When we were doing the TV show, uh, we were filming this segment in Orlando at a fight club. And Jeff... Wanted me to fight Wee Man. <laughs> it's like the bad guy. Wee Man's a good dude, and I'm the bad big guy coming in. And I'm like, Jeff, you really want me to hit this guy? He's like, Of course I do. Wow. I'm like, Oh my God. I was, so I was like, I'm fighting my best friend. <laughs> it's bad. And so, and I'm punching him, and everyone's like, Boo. Yeah. Hating on me. The whole place hated me. And so then Chris Pontius comes into the ring. And then does this wrestling move and tears my ACL. Oh, no. Right there in a spot. I'm on the ground, like, kind of in shock, drooling. 
and I was in just so much pain and they're like jumping on me like they didn't victory know. they didn't know and I'm looking at the guy stop it stop it stop it and I somehow get out and then I had to have you know reconstruct from knee surgery oh my god um and then I had the whole surgery, and that's when I got Final Cut point one. Okay, <laughs> that's, when you, that's when you started. Started, yeah, right when it came out of the gates. I learned how to, I just want to start learning. I was at home recovering, learning how to edit. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Were yeah. you editing skate videos at that point? Or just whatever, oh, okay. you know, I can get my hands on. Oh, okay. hmm. You yeah. enjoy it? I love it. Really? Yeah, I, I love it. You're hired. <laughs> we Let's get a budget for this TV show. Yeah. Over here. <laughs> <laughs> Come in, I can do some editing. I can I can crank it out. Oh, man. And then uh, years went on, and you know I still love cutting. I cut all my own projects. Okay. So I don't. I can't. You know, in this town, you can't really rely on anyone unless you have a budget. And you get to put your vision the way you want it. Exactly. Yeah. You know, sometimes it just takes time because, you know, you cut it and you're like, oh, I got to put it away for a few days and I'll come back with fresh eyes and, you know, find all the mistakes and, yep. you know, just massage the cut. And yeah, I'm like, right now I'm de developing an idea that I want to pitch pretty soon. So Ooh. I've shot three short films. They're like 13 minutes long. And then uh, I'm getting ready to, just to take the idea and crunch it. I'm going to have a friend help me do this. Making it like a three to five minute presentation. So and That's it's just tough. Yeah. No, it's not. No, you know, when you take a long thing and you try to get it short, that's you just, tough. You just want to get the ideas. And I don't know how to really come across like that yet. It's, uh, there's something that I can cut really quick and good. I like music videos and stuff. Okay. I, I like all that stuff. Right. So, uh, but yeah, thanks to Chris Pontius that he taught me, he got me to go and become an editor. So You're busting your ACL. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. It's a bit, the footage never got made it to the air. So. No, didn't even make it. Nope. Huh. They don't want to show anyone getting hurt. Yeah. Interesting. I so, thought that was all premise. <laughs> so like, you Not know, like the, really hurt, yeah. the first season of Jackass was the better season because it was the most dangerous stuff you saw, uh -huh. but it went away quick. It did. So when Johnny Knoxville did the fight, the fire suit, I don't know if you remember. Yeah, uh, I remember it. Yeah. He was yeah. hopping around on crutches and we lit him on fire. Oh, okay. But he had all the special protection on. And then, but uh, since some kid mimicked jackass and got hurt. Oh, oh wow. And that, that they just, all right, that stuff's gone. You'll never see that on TV again. I mean, they had the disclaimer up and everything. I mean, it it's illegal, matter. but. It doesn't matter. Wow. When he did the barbecue, when he put, put, put the meat suit mm -hmm. on and put him on the barbecue. Oh <laughs> That's such a bad idea. <laughs> That's a bad idea. Yeah. yeah. Funny. The she, dog ate that. I remember it was Heather's dog and a girl we work with on Big Brother. Her dog was stoked that day. <laughs> <laughs> Had a lot of steak. Uh, the whole show should have been called Bad Idea. Yeah. No way. <laughs> what do you mean? You made people laugh. Uh, no, it, uh, in a good way. I heard stories uh, later on that would be like, you know... I had this great moment with my my grandpa who was you know, maybe had like some sort of disease or like and he would watch Jackass and it would make him laugh. Yeah. And I'd be like and they'd be like, Thank you. And I'd be like, Wow. It's amazing. Yeah. That's, that's right. cool to hear that, you yeah. know? Like I'm glad we you know we did something that brought laughter to people during during tough times. Oh, you know? for sure, yeah. for sure, and also probably brought families together too of, of enjoying something together yeah. that they could all laugh at, like viewing parties. <laughs> Thirty people viewing parties. Yeah, I had some friends that live in Hawaii. They're like, yeah, we just had the viewing party, and I'd be like, wow, crazy. I thought it was crazy going to movie theaters and like literally watching this stuff in there I agree yeah. I, it's like a roller coaster of uh, excitement and scaring and, yeah. and people being grossed out and just just this dynamic like of chaos you know and it's fun it's rad to be a part of that I'm, I'm stoked seriously yeah did you come up with any ideas for Jackass for skits yeah were you in the writers meetings not too much in, during the TV show days because uh, I was still at Big Brother oh okay mm -hmm. so I was just kind of came out and filmed and but I, I did a couple, like I said uh, earlier, with the 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 human handrail mm -hmm. and like the Oompa Loompa stuff. And uh, but it's just you know, I I can only do what I could do, you know. Like I said, just rad just to be a part of it. Yeah, I'm just documenting all that stuff too. It's laughing amazing. with your friends and getting paid is a good job. It's a great <laughs> job. It's great. Were you bummed you just only a camera operator the entire time and not like a producer? You know, probably because I felt like I you know uh, did a lot of producing um you know when i'm when i'm inciting like hey getting these guys talk to me and like getting the pull that's a that's a producer mm -hmm. right so yeah, mm. yeah i should have had a producer credit fuck you <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> maybe if we do another one. Yeah, maybe. I mean, like I said, it's just rad to be a part of something like that. Yeah. It's fucking awesome. Not yes. that many people get to do that. And it all started from skateboarding, yeah. which is yeah, crazy, know. you know? <laughs> all the crazy, dumb ideas that we, you know, mustered up and... Like say for instance the uh, the Josh Casper cover. Oh, oh yeah. for Big Brother. Yeah, and uh, I hope he looks back at it today. and Goes, oh, that was fun. Uh, Why he wasn't really into it at the time? He was Benny Hanna in yeah. over. I just you know I think we're making fun of the, his bad rap. Oh, okay, that he had at the time, and I'm sure he's a cool dude today. You know. Mm-hmm. Wait, wait. Wh- I want to know exactly what was it, why was he, did he have the bad rap though? Because I think he had the reputation of being a rollerblader. I think that's what it was. <laughs> yeah, you don't remember him having like a kind of a, some stigma attached to him. Casper Holic. Ca- oh, you uh, were Casper No. And I think what, what was fun about with Big Brother is we had different theme issues, mm-hmm. and that one was the worst issue. <laughs> Okay. And, and he, he was, had the cover. Yeah. The, cover. <laughs> the worst. Yeah. And so I drummed drummed up the idea of him Benny Hani. And then having ladies poured blood all over them and big ladies. Mm-hmm. And they loved him. <laughs> oh, did they? Oh, man. Those women, ladies were, were all, they were all porn stars. Oh, okay. And uh, they just love Josh. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but. No, it's. Maybe not. I don't know. Whenever the <laughs> cameras shut off. You know? Yeah. What about, I was going to ask a question about, there was a cover that came out a while, like obviously a while ago of Big Brother, but way before this stuff was relevant now of like uh, Jared Barry having a cover for uh, Big Brother and it was like the first like gay skateboarder having like a cover. Uh, that was, yeah, that was a pretty groundbreaking time. Mm-hmm. I don't rem- I didn't have anything to do with it. I don't even know where he was from. Do you guys remember where he was from? By any um, chance? Midwest. Mm, definitely Midwest. Yeah. Uh, it was definitely a groundbreaking time, you know, and was that the gay issue we did? I yeah, might have so. been, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. Wow. How, how did you, how did that end up happening? Do you remember? You know, I don't remember how it transpired, but it's just, you know, probably just like, hey, we should just do this. And he was the guy and, you know, obviously was willing to put on the leather chaps and <laughs> do the nose grind down the rail. And yeah. The, the history in the making. Yeah. What was the response that you guys got at the magazine? You know, I don't remember, but I'm sure there's a, probably a lot of people were uncomfortable with themselves. I'm sure. Oh, yeah. You know how skateboarding was back then. Right. Yeah. Different times. Different yeah. times, for sure. Huh. Great skater. Yeah, yeah, he was good. Yeah. He'll, like, hit us up on Instagram and stuff like that. Yeah, right? I see him, I see yeah, him lurking s- around. Still skating, yeah. yeah. It's rad. It's super That's rad. cool. Yeah, there's a lot of good skateboarding going on today. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. I, you know, I try to follow all the stuff on Instagram, like the barracks, and I try to compare the two. And like when you look at the barracks, it's like video game skateboarding. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just so like, how did that guy just do this? Right. You know? And, and Thrasher is kind of like the core. They have great stuff, but it's definitely more of the lifestyle, you know, and mm-hmm. barracks is video game, which I hope I'm not disrespecting. I like it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Skateboarding yeah. coming out of there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're doing great stuff. No, for sure. But you had your hand in a lot. You you, you were in such a great era, though. The I'm, Big Brother days. I mean, the the um, sugar-coated penis pops, Tim Gavin. Yep, Tim. On the box, mm-hmm. you know? Um, just, just a lot of rad stuff. Yeah, so much fun things we did with Big Brother, like the trading cards. and Yeah. We made a little 45 that went with one of the... I think, you know, a little 45. I don't remember what, how it came out. We made a cassette tape. So they were like floppy square ones? I don't, it, no, it was a regular 40, you know, vinyl. Really? A little record. Yeah, a little record. I tried to play drums. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys, it oh, it was a record of you yeah, guys. Yeah, we, we played, we made music. What was the name of your band? Kind of Fat. <laughs> <laughs> wow, dude. Oh, that's pretty fat. Pretty, <laughs> that's a sequel. Uh, pr- pretty much, yeah. yeah. We ever decided to go back in the studio? <laughs> totally fat. <laughs> but like I said, such a great era, though. Yeah, you know, I, I look, I look back and it's just like, wow, we were so lucky. Thank you, Steve Rocco, for you know bringing me in and allowing me to get the opportunity to do all that, and and you know even just Jeff and all, everyone else that you know. To loop me in, you know, and then yeah. look what it, you know, turned into. Yeah, it's, we were talking with Socrates the other day, and he was like, just talking about how um, all these people went on to be do bigger and better things. Yeah. yeah, like from that era. I mean, look at Spike Jones, Academy Award winning director. It's insane, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, good shit. Yeah. Jeff Tremaine, mm-hmm. a lot of yeah. people. Yeah, doing good stuff. Yeah, Jason Lee. Jason Lee. 
Rick Cossack. Hey, you yeah. know, I'm here in the nightclub. Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> Any fondest memories of that time, though? I know that's There's a so very many. difficult question. I but know, but I, I think, I just, like, I think I mentioned this earlier. Like, some of my favorite was like, "Oh God, we have to go to Venice." <laughs> and I look back and like, those are the greatest moments in skateboarding for me. You know, because. We're here on the beach, mm-hmm. maybe get lucky if we got it, because we can't find anywhere to skate and shoot, so we'd go get something in the in the, in the pit. Right. And looking back, at those, that's great. Yeah. That's, that's a good, those are good times. Yeah. Just being out in the wild. And mm-hmm. That's probably when you shot, uh, was it Mike York had the cover with like a boom box? Oh, yeah. That, yeah. Oh, yeah. Which was, was parlayed into the video. I got to make that, I directed that little segment with the radio. Oh, okay. So we did the, you know, everyone wearing the, the boom box and uh, the, the B-boy outfit mm-hmm. and it kind of, you know, triggered in, you know, it was like a continuous kind of thing. Everyone doing the theme. It was fun. It was a great cover. Yeah, there was a lot of good covers. Yeah, When's the last time you uh, hopped a fence to go sit in the schoolyard for all <laughs> the hours to escape photo? I haven't hopped a fence in a long time. They, they wouldn't let us do that on King of the Road. No, no, uh, no trespassing. trespassing. No, Vice couldn't do it. Oh. But Thrasher guys could. So it'd be like, all right, cool. Camera's down. We're going to take a little break. You let know, them let, let them do their thing right you know, we, we don't want to be uh, holding them back you know and like yeah. we'll get the wrap up when they hop back over you know and it's, also they're filming it with their filmers we have two cameramen out there they got right. it we don't you know I would want to shoot like the stuff and uh, we were in uh, San Bernardino with Enjoy and there's a huge rail and I'm kind of supposed to just shoot the reaction. I'm like, fuck this. I want to shoot the skate yeah. action. <laughs> I'm like, this guy's uh, Jackson Pill is about to smith grind the whole thing. Yeah. It's this massive rail. And you got the angle. Yeah, I had to film it. I couldn't, I didn't care. Even though I didn't make the cut, maybe, but I wanted to film it. I just yeah. Wanted, I wanted to see it. Yeah. And it's in your blood. Yeah. Oh, instincts. Come on. Yeah, dude. I wonder what my. <laughs> photo never made the cover but anyway that's a whole different I don't know you don't even remember what about when you went on King of the Road do you think that it was a big part of like all three vans working together to make it like so they like enjoy one do you think that you guys filming it help them win no they did it all on their own oh okay like yeah I we, did, we we weren't allowed to uh, intervene intervene or give any ideas or anything to help them okay. you were just documenting we were just documenting we were hands off they did it on their own, and uh, you know that way they can win, and they did, and they did a great job. But with you winning, I mean, with them winning, it felt like you won too. Absolutely, all that hard work paid off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's awesome. That's right. And man. it was so fun. There was a one of the um, with one of my favorite days was when Jerry Gurney came out. Okay, that's, that's his name, right? Yeah. Excuse me if I botched it. Well, but that, I don't know who that is. He's the dude who plays guitar. He's just kind of a slasher style. Louis, is that correct? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jerry Gurney. <laughs> Jerry Gurney. And he was so funny, he was so wild. And he put on this cannibal corpse type paint and just had a, that's what was the cover. It made the cover. Yep. And oh. it was just, to me, that was, that was one of my highlight moments on that like, King Road with Enjoy. Like, this is awesome. Like, he just. The energy was a little low. Jerry Gurney, insert Jerry Gurney, and this was like a spike of like <laughs> energy, you know? And uh, it just got everyone hyped, and yeah, just made a great segment of the, of the episode. It's amazing. Yeah. Did Sinclair have red vines on the dashboard that he was... Uh, <laughs> I don't think... Does he eat red vines? Yeah. No. He turns them into... He leaves them on the dashboard Ew. so they turn stale. It's like jerky. Yeah. It's like, it's, <laughs> that is... Really? Red vine li- licorice jerky. Man, we're going to have to call him and ask him that. What's up with Larry Perkins in Big Brother? Good question, man. <laughs> Where is Larry Perkins? <laughs> we need some LP in our lives. Yep. I know. We need to... I was talking to Mike about that, and we need to bring Larry Perkins back. Larry Perkins needs to live. Did yeah. you shoot those photos? No. Oh. But those stories, he was, he was sharing me the stories. It was just so funny, you know? There was a conversation that... There's an actual... I think it's on YouTube... Him talk, calling Jeff Tremaine. <laughs> oh, seriously? <laughs> it's so funny. You can just tell Jeff's getting like really angry and yeah. kind of going along with it. And <laughs> <laughs> man, you feel fucking you're doing it. I've done it. You've done it. <laughs> Listen, right. more to come. We're not done yet. Not done. I'm telling wow. you. Man. Well, you said you have a some type of secret project going on that yes. we can't talk about. Not yet. 
uh, tequila kicking in yet? Do we, we, are you, uh, I told, I, 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 that's not Fiji in there, dude. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of, you <laughs> CBD water. <laughs> We're trying to get it out of you. No, but it sounds like you're, you're doing it. You're still going. You're uh-huh. doing a lot of cool shit, mm-hmm. which is awesome. Anything else that there is going on that you could tell us about? Yeah. Not much at okay. the moment. Okay. Yeah, I've just been like lately just like, hanging out at the comedy store. Oh, that's rad. And then uh, became friends with a lot of people there. And I just mm. I just like the whole dynamic of a, a comedian knowing how to control a room. Yeah. And, and making taking you on a journey. And it's funny. And there's just something to that. It's, it's a special skill set. Oh. Uh-huh. Trying it on stage? Me? Yeah. Nah, I don't want to do it. <laughs> Wait, so you go and just watch all the time? Yeah. That's really cool, actually. I saw uh, Monday Night's Jeff Ross was testing out some material for an upcoming roast. Oh, wow. So you get to hear the jokes beforehand, you know? Yeah. And he's like, all right. He's like, hey, shut that door. This is kind of intimate. And then he's like, there's times where I'm there and I'm like, Oh shit, Chappelle's in here. Wow. And you're like, and you just go in, you just sit back, and you're like, I'm at church. Yeah. <laughs> and he was like, let it rip. I'm watching the Chappelle show live. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and incredible. He's, and he's just riffing and like, just, you know, and he's just such a, and these guys, they they're, have that skill. They're pros. Know? They're pros. Pros. Yeah. I've seen, I was started going there and watching the roast battle TV show. You know, it turned into a TV show, yeah. but, but in the early days, I, it was just, I, I would go, I would stand in the back in the small room upstairs before the other guy goes, Hey, um, want to come sit down? And I'd be like, oh, okay, cool. You know, I just try and play it cool and stand in the back and yeah. I was happy. I didn't care if I stood for three fucking hours. I'm watching the best shit ever, you know? And like, there was this one moment, I'm, this guy was trying to attack saying, you know, things to Jeff Ross and, mm. and Leslie Jones was in the room. And she almost climbed over and just wanted to beat the dude up. And I was like, yes, I'm at the right spot. <laughs> oh, this, 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 he was getting heckled. Well, he was getting, he was heckling Jeff Ross and just saying, but wasn't he doing it correctly? It was just yeah. trying to be malicious and stupid. And uh, just yeah, not, yeah, you're not yeah. funny. And, and that pissed off Leslie Jones. And man, you don't want to piss that woman off. She'll kick your fucking ass, I'm sure. I almost watched it happen. I was like, rat. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, get her less. Yeah, it's like, I felt like it's, you know, you're, it's a punk rock concert. Sure. That it has that energy, you know? And I'm like, this is cool. This is contagious. It's fun. Mm-hmm. And I was just, I got hooked. It's like the, you know, just, I got, I would. It's like a drug. Every, yeah. Got addicted to it. I love um, those rows, Lisa Lampanelli. I didn't Queen see that. Queen of Mean. Oh, she's good. Mm. She is good. Those roasts, I love those roasts. They're gnarly, though. Yeah. They really go in. But I feel like what you see on TV is kind of probably dumbed down and sure. they probably take a lot out you know like they go in pretty good though yeah. I heard some stuff the other night man pretty I was like good. wow <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say it because I don't want to give anything out yeah, you know yeah, but yeah. it's just like whoo we if you get that on TV man wow that's amazing yeah damn There's, is there a certain comedian that you're like super into it's hard to say it's just everyone's different everyone has a special skill and mm-hmm. you know you, whoever can just can you know you can ride with and enjoy it and then Captivate you there. I like you know, yeah, yeah. anyone. Chris, really, really likes Chris D'Elia. Oh, Chris, do you see him there at all? Yeah, yeah, that dude is hilarious, dude. Yeah, it's weird. It's just you see so many people and they're just testing out their stuff. Yeah, they're hanging out. It's just their uh, it's their workshop, you know, it's their it's their it's their jam. Have you seen anyone like come up from there? Like, have you been you going for a while? You said, or yeah, I've gone for the past few years. So I haven't seen the guy who's just like springboarded. But you know, everyone's like, if you if you you know, they're on their way up, you know. But um, it's just you know, sometimes you'll see like Chris Rock come in, you know, and they, they'll <laughs> shut the room down and you can't even enter unless you're oh, already in there. Oh, gotcha. So so you that's what's cool about that place. You can go there and next you know you're seeing this person without. Any announcement, you know, and like it's pretty exciting for the the you know participants that go to the club. It's amazing. Yeah, it costs money to go. Sure, a couple bucks, or something. Yeah. You, know. you have to take a, a drink minimum or something like that. I think so. Probably like two drinks, oh, a couple okay. cokes. Yeah, yeah, whatever water. And yeah. you can stay for however long you want. Well, you know, for the set. For right? the set, you know, like so. Uh, I usually go like a Monday or Tuesday nights, and it's for it's a little more easier to hang out and just chill. But like on the weekends is more of like, uh, you know, I don't go there anymore because it got so busy and headliners and and I just like, I don't want to intrude, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would go there a lot to see uh, Brody close out the night, but unfortunately he passed away this past Mm. year. And uh, 
he would go he would do what was called the Sam Kennison spot in the main room because that's what he did he'd close out the night in the main room and just do whatever so I would go see watch Brody and uh, and it would just be a wild show it would be fun and it could be whatever and but I met Brody working on ridiculousness. Oh, that's how I met him first before I even started going to the comedy store. You were just a staff photographer. For yeah, that, still right? photographer. On oh, so you would just take photos of them on stage? Yeah, and just work for a couple hours. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> what did they need the photos? Camera in the box. I didn't need because it, it was so far away back. So you only need it. What would you need photos for? Press, you know, Instagram, oh. it's Facebook, Twitter. Okay. Huh. MTV website. Wow. But I don't do it anymore. Rick Cossack, bro. It's all part of like, you know, it, it was stems like with, I come from the magazine. The magazine was about humor and mm -hmm. then we make these movies and TV shows. It's about laughing. And so obviously I'm interested in, in the stand up because I want to laugh too. It's totally. fun. Yeah, I'm yeah. A, yeah. It's a good vibe, you know? And it's also healing. Exactly. Yeah. Man, can't get better than laughing. Did we laugh today? On a, a couple laugh? times. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're, yeah. We you're did. good. Yeah. yeah. You think the viewers are going to laugh a little bit? I think yeah. they are. I hope so. so. Yeah, are you ready to think... make a laugh? Well, I, I, I'll... Give us a good story. I think I just did. <laughs> <laughs> you have, though. Yeah. Yeah. This has been incredible, dude. This thank is you amazing. for. Yeah. Thanks for allowing me to come on. Bro, yeah. thank you. I know you guys have hit me up from time to time, and I'm like, well, I guess it'll happen when it's supposed to happen. Yeah. It's all about scheduling, you know? It's, it's tough. You know, you, you got all the A-listers out of the way. Now it's time to get, like, the, the, the behind the scenes and the industry guys. Oh, there's still A-listers out there. You're you know an A-lister, I mean? dude. Yeah. All right, all right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, Rick. Rich history. Yeah. Oh, Rich yeah. history. Super grateful. We're grateful to have you yeah. here. Bro. We're thankful to have you do what you've done. Seriously. You know, the skateboarding stuff, all the jackass stuff. It's like, yep. Did a lot of stuff for the culture. So, yeah. We well, appreciate it. Yeah. Hopefully, we do some more. If you ever find that photo of me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we'll put it up on the gram. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> 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 Can we give you some Nine Club stuff to take home? Coffee mugs, please. Hats, stickers for your board. I, did, I love, you got shirts? Yeah. Absolutely. What size? Extra large. Extra large. Extra large. Kelly, yeah. will you do the honors, bro? Thank you so much. I didn't realize you had swag. Oh, oh do yeah. we give swag? We got it all, bro. Cool. Coffee mugs. We got, uh, what else do we have, Raj? We need to get some, we need to get some new stuff up in here. Yeah, meeting. yeah we need to have a production meeting. Yeah. Are people buying stuff on the website? Yeah. Yeah. From time to time. yeah. It sells pretty good. Yeah. I like it how when you guys do the, the the experience and people can donate money in the chat room. Mm -hmm. I think that's yeah. pretty cool. Mm -hmm. We had no idea. Like, we just kind of went into it and we were like, hey, people are donating. It's amazing. I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, we didn't either. I wow. mean, we just kind of jump into these things and just go, you know. But then now we do a little raffle. You know, we have stuff to give to people who donate. That's what I really like. And it reminds me when we did uh, Jackass World, because, like, we had the website, which didn't work. Okay. Uh, it was before 3D. And uh, so the fans would send us stuff. They sent us gifts, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And then yeah. we, and so we'd have it so Chris Pontius would open up and, like, show, would show, hey, such and such from me, Susie from England yeah. uh, sent us this. And it'd be so nice, yeah. you know? It's like, really cool. Somebody yeah. just sent us these today. Yeah. Like the, the reissues of, like, Cream can yeah. KCKs. How old are these? They're reissues, like, in, in Europe. Wow, so Duff's is back? They're still alive, apparently. Does Cream get a paycheck for this? Probably not. Oh, mm. that sucks. Well, we don't know. Yeah. Well, I hope so. But, uh, yeah, the chat's fun. We see you in there all the time. Yeah, you know, I, I, I... Chiming I, in. I've missed, I've missed the last few because it's like, oh, shoot, it's, it's every week now, right? Every week at seven, yeah. Yeah, I see the post, and I'm like, all right, tonight I'm going to jump in for a second. Yeah. But I've missed Thank the last couple. Thank you, bro. I know, you got to uh -oh. be, yeah, you want to uh, put some people in timeout? What do you mean? Well, if they're mouthing off we in the chat, you can, oh. can you can put some people in timeout. Eh, whatever. whatever it's called. It's all right. I think you should come on the experience too. Yeah. Oh, I'd love to. That would be fun. And I can meet Steezus. <laughs> that would be a big Steezus fan. I am a Steezus fan. Well, He's love a great it. dude. He is a good dude. I really always, good. I don't know if you noticed, but I always try to put the candles up. And oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> listen, we just try to have fun. Dude. Yeah. You know, it's like when's, it's when's a good the, time. When's the Nine Club Candle series coming out? We had them. Oh, oh you missed it. Oh, they're gone now, huh? Yeah, Are they gone? gone? I think they're all gone. 
We did. Oh, we had a Steezus three wick candle. That's amazing. Is it two wick or three? It was three. Three, three wick. Okay. We had a, it was a single. We had a Lacrobe mm-hmm. Pamplemousse flavor single wick. And then we had a Kelly Hart uh, no wick Cinnabon. candle. <laughs> Cinnabon flavor. K fatty no wick. K candle. fatty no wick. <laughs> I just love how he's so honest and open. Like, yeah, I use bath bombs and, you know, that's just great. Yeah, good for him, man. He's yeah. cool. Probably taking a bath right now. <laughs> <laughs> Rick Kosick, dude, Thanks thank so, you so much yeah, for coming right. on. Thinking, it's yeah. incredible. Thank you. Kelly, you're way over there. Thank you, Rick. I'll, I'll give you a shake All after we're done. All the stories you've had and just the uh, continued success with yes, whatever thank you. you do. Thank you so much. It's incredible. Here's some Nine Club stickers for your board. Put that on your board next time you go skate. Or your camera. Or yeah, or oh, yeah. My, or my camera case. case. Put yeah, it on. Yeah. You go. With Hogan. No, on the camera, so that when you <laughs> when you get uh, a mouse trap to the ear. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. He's done doing that stuff. But here you go. Coffee cup. Here's a nine club switch flip Manny. Oh, uh, mug. Hint, hint. Is that you? That's me. Nice. Right there. Well, this is a uh, Lance Mountain drew that. That's so little cool. rendition of uh, the switch flip Manny. It's kind of a thing around here. A little bit. It's, it's a staple, yeah. It's a staple. Here's an XL Nine Club shirt for you nice. to take home right there. Thank you, thank you. And Rick, let me tell you, this is one of my favorites, bro. What it's, is it? It's a Nine Club embroidered hoodie. Sweet. There you go. Super comfy. Hell yeah. Now, last Hell but not yeah. least, though, you a hat guy? You I am a hat guy, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Nine Club New Era hat Ooh, for you. I'll wear it this weekend. There you go, yeah. dude. It's, it's sunny out now, so you need yeah. a little protection. A little protection. I'm going to The Cure. Are you going to... That's amazing. Yeah. Oh, you said you were going with Wee Man. Yeah, we're going to go to see The Cure on Saturday with uh, the Pixies and the Deftones. Where are they playing? Somewhere in Pasadena in the parking lot of uh, the Rose Bowl. I don't know. Now, do you get comped these tickets or do you go out and buy them? I am hooked up. <laughs> okay. He knows people. You know people. I, I know people. <laughs> you know I shot their second album cover. Mm-hmm. For the Deftones. What? For the Deftones, wow. Yeah, around the fur album cover. Wow. Yep. Okay. I got the gold record in my place. The- Seriously? Yeah. How did you, what? Yep. So if we, if there's people that we're fans of that are playing, could you get tickets or is it just the, the certain people, certain Mm. Right, do your connections span across <laughs> the whole uh, music oh, industry good. or uh, some things you know I just don't flex it too hard you okay. know but uh, do you yeah. got a connection at this, the comedy store I mean that's pretty easy yeah easy. it just depends you know mm. I, I don't want I don't want to intrude too hard but, sure. but if you guys want to come down on Monday nights by all means we yeah. should do a little nine club outing there please Rick Cossack. Well, yeah oh yeah yeah that'd be fun maybe experience episode thing we do we film it oh. you, can't, you can't film in there that's oh, true selfies maybe <laughs> yeah. a little bit just do some photos or maybe just bring a little handy cam and just do some stuff and maybe uh i could get permission out chris rock's trying his new set <laughs> 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 kelly's uh, what he's finding <laughs> <laughs>